Call well, meeting to order. Shelley, can you do a roll call, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. District 1, Councilman Rios. Here. District 2, Councilman Pastor. Present. District 3, Councilman Lethem. Present. District 4, Vice Mayor Stapleton. Here. District 5, Councilwoman Giles. Here. District 6, Councilman Shipley. Here. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Shelley. Did we have uh, Gary online? Chief Robinson? Nope. Do we have him online? Yeah. He was going to do the invocation. Father in heaven, we're grateful for this opportunity we have to be gathered together as a city body and, and those who are present to observe the business of the city. We'd ask that thy blessings be with those who are presenting and who are called upon to make decisions this evening, that thy spirit will attend them, that their those decisions will be in accord with the needs and and uh, desires of, of those that, that they're chosen to serve. We ask that thy blessings be upon those who are those city employees who are working in the field and the first responders and all those in our city who may be suffering at this time. Again, we are grateful unto thee for all that thou has given to us. And we say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll go to a summary of current events, and we'll start with uh, Freddie and Ship and Fernando. But we'll start with Freddie online. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, at this point, I, I don't have anything. Appreciate it. Thank you, Freddie. Fernando? Um, just one thing. Uh, I know that uh, we're coming up on a deadline to register to vote if you want to vote in the general election that's coming up. So for anybody who might have moved or needs to update their registration or register, I'd encourage them to do that like very quickly because I think there's only a couple days left to get that done. And uh, shout out to all the volunteers who showed up today to start on that railroad overpass and starting to look pretty good. So thank you. That's it. Thank you, Fernando. Jesse? Mayor, I really don't have anything to report other than what Fernando said about the trust, train trussle looking amazing, and I think that's a job well done and getting done. Thank you. Thank you. Charlene? Um, I would just like to give a shout out to BHP. They've done an amazing amount of work over there at the Old Dominion Mine Park. Through these last few months, they can do uh, make safety improvements, and they've made so many with big D9s and <laughs> we're going to have some really, really nice trails over there. So thank you very much to them for caring about this community. Um, we had a library uh, committee meeting and we all agreed that Rayella as the interim director is really doing a terrific job. Um, there's some statistics too that she shared with us and keep in mind, this is with the library being closed for five months. So these are pretty good statistics for, you know, given that. Um, Year-to-date library attendance is 38,404 people crossing the door, ca crossing the threshold. There were 695 hours worked by volunteers. There were 23,873 items circulated. So that includes books, DVDs, you know, what have you. Um, and this is, like I say, this is with the library being closed. So they're doing a great job over there. Um, I attended the opening of the Pretty Kind Boutique that's owned by Erica Flores and Sarah Medlin. You got to give a real lot of credit to these girls for starting a business in times like this. And it, it is so well done. That is a beautiful shop and it's well done. And I just wish them the best of luck. And there were people in there the whole time I was in there. They were in and out, in and out, in and out, buying things. So thank you to this community. We need to support them. Um, and then I did not realize that Megan and Ginger pretty much are 
keeping the city hall going. I, I didn't realize that they were really the only ones here most of the time and during the day. So we need to just <laughs> tell them thank you so much because that can't be an easy job. People ringing at the window and phone calls and every everything else they're doing. Um, and then on October 3rd, there will be an open house at the Center for the Arts. It's to reopen the Naughty Fox shop that's already presently there but they've, they've been closed during COVID and then it's also to welcome turn the page the vintage clothing and um, items shop they she's moving from downtown broad to the center so um, I think both of these businesses are really going to help attract visitors and they're going to help the center and let's all just try to support them um, and then I would like to report that I observed Terry who I don't know his last name but he is one of the employees that regularly cleans the bathrooms he here and at Old Dominion Mine Park and I think down on Collins Park. Well, anyway, I saw him the other day when I was walking at Collins Park, so he didn't see me. So, so he didn't know that I was observing this. He got done cleaning and then he got in his truck and he drove down the road maybe 100 feet and he stopped the truck and got out and picked up a bunch of trash that somebody had strewn on the roadside. And I thought, Okay, so many a dude would have just driven right by and pretended they didn't see that. And like I said, he didn't see me, so that, that was, he just needs thank you for that. He needs recognition for that. And then lastly, this month, for the month of September, the High Desert Humane Society is offering half-off adoption fees for the, at the cat rescue. Um, many folks don't understand why there is a need to charge for the, uh, charge an adoption fee. Mm -hmm. It's really expensive to get these cats and the, and the dogs as well at the rescue to get them spayed and neutered, get their shots, get them, you know, all the things that go along with that. So it's quite inexpensive right now, and it really they really need to get some cats moved out of there. They're at capacity, and they can't take any new ones in, and, and we have a serious cat problem in this community. So anybody that wants a cat, now's the time. That's it. Thank you, Shirley. Mike? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to give a, a shout out to the Public Works Department, the guys who have been working on the uh, sidewalk uh, improvements for uh, the highway. Uh, looks real good, the jobs they're doing. And, and because I walk on the bypass a, long t a lot of times, I hope Paul and uh, Jerry can get together to get the bypass ones fixed too, just to make it a little bit safer for everybody. Uh, but I just want to give them a shout out, Jerry. Thanks, huh? That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Mike? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just have a few things. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Public Works for uh, the box culvert repair on uh, Cottonwood. It's finally getting done. It's been down for, what, Jerry, six months, eight months? Maybe more. More. <laughs> it's nice to see that it's finally getting done. So make sure you thank your crew for me, please. And then... Uh, just another reminder, school started on uh, Monday, the 21st, so uh, I know the uh, school's been out for, I think I've figured seven months now. Wow. Spring break is when uh, school stopped. So just be careful with the kids and be patient with the high school and the teachers. This is all new for them uh, going back to school. I know. Uh, Deanna's son, he's a sophomore in high school, and it's went from computers to now back, but it's, it's still difficult. They're not used to this, all face mm -hmm. mask all day and everything else, so just be patient with the kids and the staff and the schools. And then I'd like to give a shout out to the high school for uh, painting the G. Looks a lot better orange. I mean, it looked great, uh, multicolors, but I think it's uh, back to normal, you know, with the orange. And then uh, I want to do a moment of silence. Uh, we lost uh, two, well, we lost three people, but two that I know of uh, this last week in tragic accidents. Uh, first of all was uh, Michael Ann Heft, and then Gabe Fletcher. And the Fletcher family is well known in the community with Kino Floors and the Heft family as well. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to do a moment of silence for those uh, individuals.
Thank you, Mayor. That's Thank you, Mike. I have a couple of things, Mike, on that buckle on the top of the bypass. I like that one. That's when I know when I'm running, I'm at, I'm at the top of the hill. <laughs> so I like that one there. Leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just want a little bit about North Broad entrance. Um, I also want to thank those individuals that stepped up today. I know it was last minute. This is a project that's been going on for a long time. This isn't my project. This is, this is our city's project. And this is a project that dates back, I think, to 1999. Lois Moneris is the one that actually, I think, drew up that the entrance coming into Globe and leaving Globe, and that's, that's what this will look like in the end. But this has been two years of negotiations and talks with uh, Arizona Eastern Railroad. We went through three GM uh, general managers in the process uh, talking to this, and, and we knew this project was coming up where they're going to redo all this and take, take, get rid of the, the rail, rails and everything. So it, it was in their time frame. So we, didn't, we knew, we found out yesterday that we might have an open window to be able to do some work today, which was great, which was amazing. We were able to get, and we're glad to hire uh, Paul Contreras, Corona Signs, a professional sign painter, to get up there and do the work. It's going to look amazing. When, he's doing an amazing job up there. Um, and uh, also the pillars are being painted, uh, the sidewalks where they're yellow be painted. And there's other projects that will take place there, but it's, we're, we have limited funding. But with this negotiations and collaboration, uh, Arizona Railroad has, has taken on the, the cost of the barricading, which is high, expensive. We couldn't afford it. It would take our whole budget for it. Uh, the, they, they were in charge of all the ADOT permits, everything, just to shut a highway down. So we're in a opportun window opportunity to, to get, get it done. We have till Friday, and I think it'll happen. I, Paul is very comfortable thinking or knowing he will get it done. And all the little stuff that we were able to paint the head, the pillars, the three, the ones that needed to be painted before they open up the road, and so it's going very well. Um, I think we'll be out there again tomorrow. We'll be out there every day uh, of this week just to try and touch up some things and get things uh, taken care of. So again, I thank you to Fernando showed up and was there. You know, he heard about, he he knew about it, and uh, Michelle came, stepped up, uh, Melissa and Linda. Uh, we're all paint, we're all painting today, and we, we did we did more than we thought we could to get done today. We thought it was going to be into Thursday or Friday to get where we went. So we really appreciate it. We hope the community is going to be happy with it. We hope this is something that has been in our strategic action plan for years that I know of, and it's just the funds have been uh, pulled over from one budget year to another. So I'm glad to see that happen. I think Fernando was part of it, even with the back in in his days, even trying to get that done and all the layers of bureaucracy you got to get through just to get it done but I'm glad to see it happens and and thank you to the community because this this is their project uh, census also just a reminder the end of the month is the last we can apply remember that's how we get our funding and I think the last uh, was uh, 62 percent we're in Arizona I think it was I don't know about Gila County so we need to we need to step it up and, and get that done we that's where we get our money three thousand dollars a person per year is uh, thirty thousand dollars in ten years the next census will be in ten years um so and, and the other thing good thing about this north broad entrance is uh the globe that's there and and there there are some ideas that have that have been tossed around to do with that in the future but apparently larry brown was the one who designed that and uh, he he was a local artist and they're going to have a local art walk downtown starting october 1st so it'll be nice to if we can get the, that done, we're going to talk to his wife and see what, what ideas she has, and maybe we can do something before October 1st for that globe that's right there uh, at the entrance of globe for Larry Brown. Um, and again, that, that's all I have. Thank you. Paul. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, a couple of quick announcements. The, um, we are having a, um, a Clomar Lomar public hearing or meeting it's gonna be Wednesday September 30th at 530 at the public works yard it's also available at zoom but that is the required meeting for the uh, application for Clomar Lomar by Burger King um, on the 60 they're adding an entrance they have one entrance but they have to add another one and they have to do some adjustment of the floodplain so they have a, a process they're going through and part of that process is a, a hearing that says notification of floodway and floodplain revision um, for agave wash along ash street city of globe and so we sent that out to the property owners but it's a public meeting anybody wants to attend um, if you email council at globeaz.gov 
we'll get that to the um, the right people and get you a zoom link uh, to that and that'll be a, a week from tomorrow night and um, I'm not sure exactly uh, what goes on in those public hearings but I'm sure it's riveting the um, but they, they probably have maps and if you're a neighbor you need to see that so the um, the the other two meetings coming out um, we yes. have tomorrow night here in City Hall at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce is um, is um, is doing their uh, candidate forum for the supervisors is that correct so um, that'll be the 23rd and then a week from Wednesday that same night as the uh, as the Clomar Lomar will be the um, the uh, another candidate forum and I'm not sure it won't be supervisors it'll be Woody the treasurer and, and sheriff, yeah that's right okay that's right and have those and um, so so those will be um, they are they are hosted they are hosted and, and organized by the chamber um, but because of the COVID and, and difficulty in finding arrangements so people can participate, um, we're, uh, they're paying us to use our facility um, and we supply the, the link. We, we it broadcast not on the city YouTube channel, but on the chamber YouTube channel. And we just, we are the venue for that and nothing more. Um, just so everyone's clear. Um, let's see here. Then the, um, the other, Let's see here. Oh, I did. I did want to mention that um, this week uh, we did celebrate um, uh, Shelley uh, Salazar's 19th year with the City of Globe. Okay, and um, so we're very excited that that she's uh, she's here. She says, you know, 19 down, 19 to go. <laughs> so. So we're going for that and um, we are going to start it's in the works uh, a recognition program I think a lot of cities do a 5 10 15 20 25 30 and program and I, I think that's long overdue uh, that we recognize those people who devote so much of their life to uh, um, making the city of globe a, a, a better place for everyone um, and let's see here I think, Mr. Mayor, members, council. I, I think that's all I have for you. Thank you. Mayor, I forgot something. Can I add something to Go my report? Go ahead, Mayor. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so one of the other hats that I wear is uh, I serve on the first things first things first board for uh, Gila Regional Council, and what we do is we we use uh, the money that we get funding from the sale of cigarettes, and we use that to uh, provide opportunities for kids zero to five in their development. Um, and every year we have the opportunity to nominate someone and uh, recognize them as being a champion for kids. And this year our recipient was Adria Ricky, and she, she was our champion for kids. And the main reason that she stood out was because of all of the work that she does with the library, but doing the, the children's reading hour to little kids, um, keeping uh, books available to kids by having um, the drive-up service. And there's just so, much, so many things that she does in our community. And so I just feel like I want to make sure that the, that the community knew that she was our champion this year and we're very honored to have her. She was able to attend the meeting. And I know that she's going to continue to serve the community in her capacity with the Gila County. So I just wish her the best. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Fernando. Next, we have our first community call to the public. This is a time when any citizen desiring to speak to the council as a whole uh, can do so. Uh, comments are limited to three minutes and addressed to the whole body, uh, the whole public body uh, council. Um, please fill out a, well, we can do it uh, three ways because we have uh, the public in, in the meeting now also. They can do a, a request to speak card. You can uh, email council at globeaz.gov or you can call in at 200-0154 if they, if they wish to speak at this time. Uh, this is also a time if a citizen wants to speak on a matter that's on the agenda, just make sure that you put the item agenda number and we'll call you when that, when that comes up and at that point we are able to respond to you. Do we have anybody on email or phone? Anybody from the public? 
Okay, so we'll go to special presentations and ceremony matters. In item A, we have presentation of car wash vouchers donated to the Globe Police Department by the Globe Shining Times Car Wash. And we have uh, Mr. Floyd Clank, who's the owner. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, uh, before uh, we present on this, I wanted to spend a uh, take a minute and say a special thanks to uh, Sergeant Boyd, who's done the community outreach on this and has worked uh, with the ownership of the Shiny Times. And a special thank you to the citizens of Globe because this is an ongoing uh, just amazement to me on how much support we're getting from the community. So I'd like to introduce. Um, Floyd, uh, the owner of Shiny Times, and he can explain what's going on. Thanks. Good evening. Uh, my name is Floyd Crank, and it's nice to be here again under more friendly circumstances than in the past. <laughs> anyway, we own, my wife Diane and I own and operate Globe Shiny Times. have been there for 30 years now, 30 plus years. But uh, many times I've had to be here for other reasons. Four years on the family housing development, three years on the senior housing. Mr. Pastor, Mr. Al Gamiros, and, and Shep, Mr. Councilman Shepley. They, there were some wild times back then. <laughs> but anyway, it's nice to be here on something positive for a change. Um, you know, it's... I've had the privilege of being able to build and work in a lot of different cities and municipalities. I've built car washes with a friend of mine in Buckeye, I've built in Safford, helped people build them as far away as Marion, Illinois. And it's been my experience that when you deal with a lot of municipalities that you go through a lot of different kind of challenges. And GLOBE is, and I try to get this across to try to encourage people to go after these developers, is a wonderful place to try to work. You know, our money's just as good here as anybody else's, and, and uh, the people in this community support so much that needs to have happen. And the councilman and the supervisors and the county and everything, it's, it's a long process. But I get had the chance in the last, since I've been in business all this time, to work with people in public works. Some of them I worked with at the mine before I ever even came to private business. And there is no municipality that I know of anywhere that gets more done with less money and less people than the city of Globe. And I can say that absolutely. And these public works guys, you know, they show up in the middle of the night when, at the mine when I try to call guys out, you'd have a hassle. <laughs> I remember when that water line used to bake down there in the main street, they'd be there before I could even get after I got the call to get down there to turn things off. I have a water line where we live on out on Dickinson Drive that they're there anywhere from five to ten times a year. We make up somebody on the street makes a phone call, they come out and they put a patch on a patch on a patch, but they show up and they get it done. And they do it fast and they rock and roll. Um, and the reason why I'm here tonight obviously is to show our support for the police department. You know, we've been We've had a lot of officers come to us and we've tried to talk to them. We've tried to do things and try to help them out. But Mr. Boyd took the, the reins on it. And uh, it, it's something that I think is important for us as owners of the business because they don't get enough credit for what they're doing for our community, just like the people in public works. But these gentlemen get up, they wear these god awful vests that are uncomfortable and hot you know, they show up when they're called, and whether this community realizes it or not, there's a certain p peace of mind that we subconsciously have, knowing that we have people to call upon. And it's been frustrating for me to watch some of the negative stuff that's been coming out, including this painted building downtown. It's terrible. And so it's with a great deal of pleasure to, 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 to offer up or to work with Mr. Boyd on trying to get this set up. And what they're doing currently is they, we issue a, our premium wash 
coupon, which they're allowed to go and pick any cycle they want, depending on our time. The machine is a very good machine. It sizes all the cars, so it's able to wash them with those big bumpers and their lights with no problems. And as far as I know, they haven't had any difficulties at all. They can go on there any time of the day they want to do them. And what we're doing right now is we're just issuing our just premium wash, and if they can, if they only got a few minutes, they only need a certain amount, they can do what they want to, but they can get in and out of there in, in about 10 minutes. And, uh, you know, I don't know how we can show our gratitude to the police department, and, and it, you know, other than just say it a lot. But we're lucky to have them, just like we are the public works, but we depend on these people. So it's something that we are proud to be able to do, and I hope it continues, and don't know what else to say. I mean, they, it's, so if anybody's got any questions, they can <laughs> give them to me. No questions, but knowing Floyd for as long as I have, it's a good move, Floyd. It's a good thing. Thank you. You're very welcome. Glad to do it. Floyd, thank you for the donation, and thank you for the kind words, too. Mayor, it's, uh, I've been there with uh, Mr. Crank and we went through a lot of stuff and so and he's always tried to do things the right way and get things done and I just appreciate all his efforts and uh, we've got a couple of really positive housing developments because of his efforts and and I know he was willing to take the arrows and so I appreciate that and thank you for what you're doing for our, our staff and, uh, and the police department so thank you Mr. Crank. Very welcome. Mm -hmm. Item B, we have discussion and possible acceptance of a donation by the Globe Rotary Club of 20 additional trans trash cans to be placed on and around the Broad Street downtown area. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Members of Council, um, uh, Mickey Nye from the, the Globe Rotary is here to present on both these items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Gamero's council members, staff. Um, it, you know, the Globe Rotary Club is, a, is an organization of um, business owners as well as community leaders, and we generally meet on a Wednesday, and one of the things we try to do is we, we seem to know how to raise money from time to time and with with the uh, with COVID and the way things are going, we don't spend money every week the way we used to. So we've we've been able to amass around eleven, twelve thousand dollars. And with that money, we've worked with Paul, who is our immediate past president of of the Globe Rotary Club. And we, as a group, sat down and tried to figure out what we could do with some some money. And one of the ideas was to put some more trash cans downtown and to try to give people an opportunity to hit a garbage can versus the ground mm -hmm. because because we'd like to give uh, keep the downtown area as clean as possible. So with that, we've worked with Paul and Public Works and we've ordered 20 garbage cans that are similar to the kind that are down there already and they're going to be delivered to Public Works in probably seven, maybe eight weeks because they were ordered, I think, two weeks ago. And at, at this time, we're also ordering in the process that they're trying to determine how much extra paint to acquire from that company so that we can possibly touch up the current garbage cans that are downtown and, and kind of give everything a fresher look. Um, so that's that's where we're at today. And, and I certainly hope you accept our, our donation and our contribution to the city. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mickey, and let the, let the Rotary Club know that, that we're, we're very appreciative of that donation. We'll meet tomorrow at noon on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so that leads into item C, I guess, and discussion and possible acceptance of a donation by the Globe Rotary Club for a peace poll to be placed in the City of Globe Veterans Park. Yes, a, a peace poll is like a four by four poll and it's got four different sides and it's got a saying and the saying that we chose was may there be peace in our hearts and it'll be in english and spanish and we the, the longest that it took was to get the absolute proper verbiage in apache because we went out to san carlos to make sure that whatever we put on that pole in apache was actually the right verbiage and in, not in an effort to to make a mistake on putting it out there and say oh we, we we had the words wrong or it was graphically done improperly so um 
those are the three languages on the four sides, but that's what we'd like to do. And it's, it's out here by the um, Jammer's Bench. It, it, it's going to be over on the train side uh, in the corner where, the, where pine and oak come together, kind of just behind Jammer's Bench and um, uh, near the, that post right there. So I think that's a, a nice little area, and people walking by can see it um, and, and catch your attention. And, and I think a lot of rotary, rotary people go around as they travel through the country. They track these things and come and stop by and, and check it out. So it's a, it's a nice uh, addition. And this is if council is, um, you know, okay with this. We do have um, in the agenda the, also the applications to accept these. Um, and so they, we're, we have the option to, well, Anyways, I'm, I'll stop at this point. Sure. It's just one of those things that when you, if somebody were to stop by and read that, it might make them pause and think for a second in a very good way. And, you know, it's a little warming, fuzzy thing for people in our town, I hope. Mickey, is that carved in there? Or is it painted on there? Or what is it on the Peace Bowl? It's painted, it's from painted. what I understand. I can, I can send you a picture. I don't have it here. I can I can send it to Paul and he can I think, distribute it. I think it. there was a, some pictures in the packet. Was there yeah. The packet? yeah, but I'm pretty sure they're painted. They're not carved in or anything. Mm -hmm. They're they're printed on there. It might be. I don't know if it's painted or vinyl. Yeah, I think it's made like six feet tall, but you can bury a foot of it, unless you put it on a four by four and you can bury the post and then put this around it or you know slide it over it like a sleeve. It, it does come with instructions on how to plant it, but we're going to, um, if uh, <laughs> the donation will be given to Public Works and they'll take care of that. Well, that sounds wonderful. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Thanks. We try to be part of the town. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you, Rotary Club. Yes. Item D, we have presentation to council by Kylie Lemons of HR now or no regarding process, methodology, and benefits of conduction, a salary and compensation study for the City of Globe. And, and uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, Kelly had a, a, a family commitment, so actually presenting tonight will be um, Igor Shagoliv, and he's going to, he's partner in, in one of the primaries in the, in the company, and so he's gonna be taking over the duties of doing the presentation. Um, and this is from the request we had last week um, to, to just look at, um, uh, salary study and, and what what a salary study is and uh, I had seen uh, Kelly do a presentation at League of Cities in, in a couple different areas and I think it was a good presentation and so um, maybe Igor is going to go go through this um, he, he promised I think 15 minutes but if you have questions he's here to, to help with this it's kind of like um, uh, salary study 101 so you go ahead And nope. we got mute or something. Let's do a sound check. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, yes, my name is Igor Shagalev, and uh, I'm a president and founder of uh, uh, in consulting firm uh, HR No Consulting. And uh, I have 15 minutes. I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of the board. Uh, I would like to share my screen. And uh, please let me know when you can see it. I'm uh, going to tune to this now and uh, just give me one second. Uh, please let me know when you can see um, there you go. the presentation that I prepared for you. And, uh, there you go. Your PowerPoint is on now. Okay. Good deal. Launch that. There you go. Uh, uh, our uh, motto is share the knowledge, and that's where our name coming from. Uh, HR Human Resources know. And, and Igor, and the right now the the format it's in is a sharing. We're seeing the the slide with the notes on the side. I I don't know if that's where. You, um, that now let's the, try to let me try to eliminate that. Yeah, if you can do just presentation mode. So we can get it full screen and everybody can see yeah. it good. Yeah, let me stop sharing and uh, again and see if I can put it on the... If you launch the presentation and then share it, I think it'll be okay. Yeah. <clears throat> there. 
Um, Much better. Can you see it now? That's perfect. Okay. So we are an um, independent consulting firm that provides advanced and effective solutions. In total rewards, employment analytics is our specialty. Um, we are, uh, the advantage of our firm is uh, we smaller uh, outfit. And uh, we're not just consultants, we all come from a practitioner's background. While uh, many consultants actually never set foot on uh, in a fire department office or in the hospital floor or in a in a uh, any actual facility, we coming from those places. We all been uh, professionals, practitioners, and we have extensive experience. We're also local. We have local presence. We are based in Tucson, Arizona, and we service mostly west of the United States. Uh, most of our clients are in Phoenix, California, Colorado, and Tucson. Uh, we have proven records in uh, uh, market analysis, uh, compensation studies, and uh, independent objective analysis. We are uh, have a very clear record, and uh, we're in a good standing with uh, Industrial Commission. We have uh, happy clients. We have no complaints. Uh, speaking of clients, uh, th those are just a few recent and uh, current clients that uh, we serviced and provided similar projects. Um, and you can see that uh, not only we service uh, many different industries, like uh, in, in case of GLHN, it's an architectural firm uh, based in Arizona, in Phoenix and Tucson. Uh, but um, uh, let's say... Um, Goodwill Industries or Hot Bay is a mining company. But many of those clients are actually municipalities, counties, and uh, government agencies. So you can see actually among those Golden Range Fire Department, uh, Colorado River uh, Fire District, uh, Marana, Town of Marana, Town of San Luis, City of Tucson, so on and so forth. Uh, we will be, we'll be happy if we can uh, provide any information for you guys. Um, typical services that we provide are we uh, review, update, and standardize job descriptions. Conduct external market compensation analysis. Uh, we are uh, trying to understand the value of the job in the relevant labor market. Uh, what's the range for this job? How much? Uh, uh, other agencies or companies or municipalities pay for certain jobs from minimum to maximum. Uh, it, it is important for organizations if they want to uh, maintain their um, competitive edge and retain their good, talented employees. We perform internal job equity evaluations, uh, which is comparing jobs between one another and uh, comparing their level of decision making, level of autonomy, authority, accountability, how important they are, what's the, um, what's the um, uh, environment that they operate, is it uh, hazardous, is it easy, what's the impact of error for this job. We uh, do that by different uh, avenues, we have uh, uh, separate different uh, methodologies, either we use point factor systems of evaluating jobs, or we use market studies. Uh, in any case, we uh, uh, maintain, in, we're trying to maintain internal equity in within the job, within the organization. Uh, develop pay structure and pay policies. In uh, um, my uh, presentation, I'll try to explain how important it is to <coughs> a good effective pay structure not only it will motivate your employees and create a career pattern, career uh, motivation, uh, not only it will help you to recruit and retain, but it also is important in terms of uh, individual satisfaction, individual equity, but uh, as well as maintaining a cost control of the, your labor costs. Believe it or not, you can actually, it's not how much money you spend, it's how you spend it. And the pay structure is one matrix, one tool that will control your labor cost. 
Uh, we slot jobs into pay grades uh, based on their in, uh, extrinsic and, and external values. We determine individual pay rates. Uh, I mean, just uh, to tell you in our study that accountant in average gets uh, anywhere from uh, uh, 50 to $80,000. Uh, this, these numbers are fictitious. I'm just using them for example. They're not exact studies. Um, but uh, how much each accountant should be making within that range, that's the uh, service that we provide. We have to determine uh, what's the equitable and fair distribution of wages. Uh, assist in salary assignment for new hires, develop automated tools to simplify HR processes. Uh, our conceptual framework, this is uh, what we build our theories and concepts and, and tools that we provide and services that we provide to our clients um, are as follows. Identify labor market relevant to City of Globe in this case. What it means is that uh, if we study, if we do the study for certain municipality, we want to make sure what is your relevant labor market? To whom we should compare your jobs? And uh, this is pretty much how we identify uh, what's the, what are participating agencies or salary survey uh, sources that we use. And the relevant labor market essentially is where you lose your people and where you hire your qualified talent. Again, what's the poll from where you like if you if you hire these people from Phoenix, and maybe you should uh, uh, you should make sure that you know what is it market, uh, what does Phoenix market offer for this kind of jobs. Uh, and if you lose your your employees to let's say city of Payson, Sedona, you you probably want to know what is their market, and you want to compare with their market. Uh, find matching market benchmarks. Uh, we don't just match uh, the titles. Accountant is, is not an accountant in any other organization. We have to understand what is the actual uh, duties and responsibilities and, and uh, minimum qualifications, and decision making, and again, authority, autonomy uh, for the job. Then we know that those matches are comparable and we can compare their pay. We mitigate pay compression. This is actually very important uh, now and, and, and very uh, uh, overall very difficult subject to control and to uh, address because minimum wage in Arizona grew so fast, so high from $7 all of a sudden to $12. That's a, it's a big increase. Now, some employees, for some employees, it took years to get to $12. And now anybody who doesn't have any experience or any service or any, any dedication or merit to your organization, they come at $12. That creates compression with experienced staff. We know and we have tools and formulas and, and methodologies how to address that. Consider labor cost and budget impact. That's extremely important because most of the municipalities live on, on uh, public funds and they have to be very cautious about their spending. And again, it's not how much you spend, it's how you really distribute these dollar amounts. Because uh, municipalities and, and businesses for that matter, just like people, they get rich and, and poor based on financial decisions they make. We try to help our clients to make those financial decisions, to make informative decisions. We develop pay structures that engages and motivates, maintain relative job worth. This is um, the concept that uh, we use all the time because uh, if, I can, if I can use a metaphor, uh, I hope, uh, that uh, jobs in our business are just like products in a grocery store. Each job has value. Some are higher, some are lower. It is very important to understand and determine the value of each job. Why pilot of the um, commercial, uh, commercial airline, airliner 
job is more important and worth more than uh, flight attendant in the same airline. And all this uh, comes back again to what's the preparation for the job? What's the accountability? How much decision making involved? How much knowledge and expertise involved? What are the conditions? Are these people front, um, front uh, safety employees who actually uh, keep the peace? Or those people, these people um, help uh, to deliver utilities to the houses? Um, impact of error. If we make a mistake, what's going to happen? What's going to happen if, if clerk make a mistake, make a typo, uh, as opposed to doctor makes, makes a mistake? Uh, build effective career and pay progression models. Not only we have to identify when we do the study, it's important to understand what is the range. Just like, again, like a product in grocery store, uh, each job has a range from minimum to maximum. You probably wouldn't want to go and buy in grocery store, let's say, gallon of milk for $15. It's out of the range. You also wouldn't want to pay somebody whose job is not worth that much, more than you have to, more than market pays for those jobs. Um, that is important to understand and uh, important to also determine what's the progression. You hire employee, what's the good way to grow this employee's wage over the years? Um, I keep going and I just wanted to ask, are there any questions? I'm, uh, Close to finish. Not yet. Uh, sources of data that we use are all reputable, paid for, not self-reported, not not uh, internet found uh, salary surveys. Among those are Arizona League of Cities, Arizona Wage Watch, Willis Towers Watson, Com Data. Economic Research Institute, uh, Mercer, and other specialized survey, uh, surveys. Those are, are companies, actually, that some of them have been in, in business for 100 years, and they do that for a living. They, they uh, actually analyze and study salaries in certain market segments. We purchase those surveys because we want to deliver very accurate reading of the labor market, how much what's the range for each job. What is important in our business is that systematic approach should be maintained to compensation. And that means we, we work in three directions. First is external competitiveness. What this job gets in a, in a pay range in the labor market, in the relevant labor market. Second is internal equity. How do you value those jobs and compare those jobs inside of your organization? What is more important for you? Hospitals obviously value nurses more than IT analysts, whereas IT software development companies do vice versa. Uh, and of course, no matter what kind of analysis we do, until you really build the, the systems and structures and uh, do very consistent and very systematic pay administration, uh, it's not going to work. Uh, so this is why we believe that systematic approach to compensation matters. It helps you recruit, retain, and reward. We call it three R's. Uh, it motivates workers to grow and to engage with, with the organization. Improve worker satisfaction, it controls labor costs, and, and certainly improve overall services provided by the city. This is just a, uh, those are the last two slides. This is just an example how important it is that your pay structure is aligned with the labor market and designed well. Many, many agencies, many organizations, we see this a lot in, in, in some uh, municipalities, uh, just recently in California. Um, you, let's say that your, uh, your bandwidth, the range between minimum and the maximum is narrow and the market pays wider bandwidth when you align your yourself with the bandwidth what's happening is market hires these people this new employee and that dot that i'm showing at the lower rate 
while you actually will overpay if you again if your bandwidth or range is narrow uh, and then what's going to happen is you're going to cap that employee an employee will have will feel like uh, there is no growth in this organization there's glass ceiling i'm not going to make any more money while in the market they actually can grow higher the same problem will uh, you will uh, probably um, observe in the opposite uh, effect, in the opposite scenario, when your range is wider than the market range for the organization. In this case, you hire them below the market. Market actually hires them at the higher rate, so you have hard time to recruit, and you're asking why is that? Well, this is exactly because you outside of the market range. And uh, the key to answer this is to know what is the market range. What, how much actually they pay police officers in your relevant labor market, or how much they pay to water, wastewater operator in your relevant market. From minimum to maximum, what is the range? Uh, I could speak about it uh, more and, and give you more details about our work, but uh, I only have 15 minutes, and I have to respect your time. Um, I'll um, uh, answer your questions, if any, uh, with, uh, with pleasure. I have a question, Mayor. Yes. Go, go ahead, Fernando. Um, so our city traditionally has not been able to compete with an hourly wage um, with some of our competitors, but we are very generous with our benefits package and health insurance. How do you factor that in into your calculation, or is that not really factored in when you're doing the salary study? Well, it absolutely should be factored because um, the the – concept we use in this case is called total compensation, which is you may pay less, but you compensate the lack of base pay by either variable pay or benefits that you provide. And uh, uh, yes, you may, uh, you may be uh, lacking in the base pay, but overall you very competitive. You also have to understand what does your population, your labor population, uh, want to uh, want to have do they really want to have like one of our clients is a call center and most of their population are um, uh, uh, younger generation and they don't care about 401k and they don't care about um, better medical benefits they think that uh, life is long and nothing's ever going to happen to them Right. As long as you know, you know what is your population, what's important to them, and you know that you can compensate lack of base pay, that's a good way to do that. And yes, absolutely, answering your question, we factor that in our studies. Thank you. Igor, if you can um, stop sharing your screen, we can see you full time, full, full size. Yes. Uh, let me. And then I think we got some more questions. Yes, I will do that in a second. Let me just. Those young people know how to use Zoom, though. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't. Okay. I, uh, let me see. At the very top, it should say stop sharing. I know. I have two screens, and I have a hard oh. time to. Okay, here it is. Um, Does any, somebody else have any questions? I do. Where you go? Uh, go ahead, Jesse. Igor, if you, if you could, um, how long would a study like this take from start to finish? Well, it depends. It's, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm uh, still trying to stop sharing. <laughs> that's okay. We can, we can see you in the small. That's okay. Okay. Um, it depends on what is the project. Um, if you're only looking for base pay comparison for certain jobs or for certain departments, you then... Um, Certainly, it, it's a smaller project. Uh, the study of 50 jobs approximately takes two months. Uh, 100 jobs will take three months and more. If you add total compensation component, uh, we, we probably will need more time with that. But generally, we're trying to, I mean, we're independent and we are for-profit uh, outfit. We want to do job quickly and to your satisfaction. 
we also have, uh, I, I should say, we also have a practice. When, when project is done, we don't quit. We don't leave you. You have six months access to us. Any phone calls, um, conversations, advice, templates that we already have that we don't have to build from scratch are provided to you for free for six months. Um, that, that, uh, that, that's the service we, we play to our clients. Any other questions? Mayor, I have a question. Yes. I don't really have a question. I just have a comment. So my comment is what I'm really liking hearing is the systematic approach with the three R's, recruit, retain, and reward. That's, that's where we're lacking. And, and so that is, I think, imperative. Yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. And this is, especially now in this dynamic market, this is extremely important. You, um, you should be able to, if you want to operate, you should be able to recruit ta talent that will provide services to your uh, communities. But you also have to retain your employees because they gain, they, they get institutional knowledge that is, some, some say it's easy to replace people, but that institutional knowledge that people accumulate that works a lot. It's actually money that you don't know that you're losing. It's a, it's kind of soft, soft funds that uh, people and and then again turnover costs money. There are studies out there that suggest that um, uh, uh, replacing one employee uh, costs anywhere from fifty to one hundred percent of that employee's annual remuneration. I mean, because I mean, you don't have somebody, you you don't provide services. You have to cover overtime. You have to use your HR to do recruitment. You have to train somebody. Those are all labor hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, Igor. I guess your company will provide us with a breakdown of the cost if this council wishes to invest in this study. And uh, I guess it sounds like you can add or or. Or subtract any of the components in your study, apparently, and, and you'll give us those uh, breakdowns. Mr. Absolutely, Mayor, we members. sometimes yeah we provide a la carte, so to speak. Mr. Mayor, members of Council, the, in this tell kind, you. Of a, a kind of a, just an informational, uh, but if if we choose to go forward, um, we would um, look at uh, HR now. We'd also uh, have to do some competitiveness in that. Not uh, it depends on where the price structure goes but definitely would include them as, as one of the possible vendors. They're also, they have just done the, the a year ago, I think they did the study for Payson and they did Marana. So there may be some ability to co-op on there. Um, but I can, I can feel Jeannie's eyes curling at home right now as I talk about procurement. So, so it's, um, we haven't gotten to a, we'd have to come up with a menu of services we need, what the goal is, and then price that out with them and so we would um, and then bring back some options to council um, but uh, but again I think we've we've met with with um, HR now before and I think they do have a, a, a quality systematic model very very rational based very math based and um, it, it just like when you see the stuff it kind of rings in your head like that makes sense mr. mayor I have one more question I, mean, I know Freddie yes. had, but go ahead Freddie. Um, or, or so um, go ahead uh, the paid time off is that also considered as um, uh, something that you factor in and do we get a comparison of how much paid time off our other competitors are offering offering as well as like benefits or is it absolutely okay absolutely this is this is important benefit I mean if you pro paid time off you basically uh, front uh, upfront given employees um, uh, of money mm -hmm. it, those the, the, those are this is a uh, compensation because you have to pay for it i mean they work but you pay for that time and yes uh one of the um like for example in in some of the projects for firefight for fire districts we also use how many holidays they provide what's the time off they provide what's the 
um, tuition reimburse, reimbursement they provide because all those are benefits that can motivate employees and, and affect your retention. Thank you. Freddie, you had a question? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, thank you, Igor, for your presentation. Um, the question I have is, um, you know, some municipalities have stronger economic engines than others. Um, does your study factor in those um, like municipalities um, and what their buying power might be uh, when it comes to salaries and and retention and, and those things? Uh, you know, does it tend to raise the curb or lower the curb uh, based on, on your findings? That's a very good question and uh, the one that uh, you may not like my answer. <laughs> but but that's, uh, that's what we do. We consultants. I mean, we come and we tell you the truth whether you like it or not. And as long as you pay our invoice, we have... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you, for example, just an example, let's say that you're in close proximity to Scottsdale and uh, your police and fire, you, you lose your police and fire to Scottsdale all the time. Just a case. No matter how much, how, how wealthy Scottsdale is, they are your relevant labor market. And if you want to be competitive, you have to compete with them. If you don't have money, you have to find a way to um, to motivate and retain you, or recruit and retain your employees some other way. Get creative. Or just make peace with this, that you're losing employees whenever they want, they go to Scottsdale. But uh, uh, the, the, to answer your question, the, how, how lucrative different municipalities are against others doesn't really affect our, our study. If this is your relevant labor market, that's who you have to compete with. A small mom and pop shop in Tucson cannot retain engineers because we have Raytheon. Raytheon pays them more, they give them better benefits, better, better time off, better more holidays and better medical um, uh, service. If mom and pop engineering shop want to survive, they either have to compete or get creative. But because this is their relative. In some cases, though, size matters. When we do studies of municipalities, we probably won't compare you to uh, our large municipalities. Unless, again, you, you, comp you absolutely lose people to those municipalities. I hope I answered your question. Uh, can I ask okay, another Thank you. Question? Go ahead, Fernando. Um, so that you bring up a very valid point, though. Um, so when you're at a smaller organization, you can learn more. You can get a more diverse experience. So, for example, if you work for the city of Scottsdale, you might be a traffic officer for four years before you do something else. Whereas in the city of Globe, you might have a broader girth of experiences. How is, does that come into play at some point or not really? It should, I mean, uh, because believe it or not, by all studies, and there's dozens of studies that, that repeatedly suggest the same thing. I, I was a scholar for 15 years. I was, I was teaching at the graduate level, and I, I read all those studies. Igor, uh, Igor, can you repeat that again? We had the train going by, and we couldn't hear what you said. You back it up about 15 seconds? Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Um, the... Um, all studies suggest that uh, compensation is not number one reason why people quit their jobs. Uh, the number one reason is their supervisor, and the number two reason is their work environment. So what it means is that you can probably pay less than, uh, than uh, Scottsdale pay to their police officer. But if they have more power, more responsibility, more impact in their community, and they feel it, and your supervisor treat them well, they may like it and they may never quit. Again, compensation is not number one. It's like number, number four reason why people quit their jobs. So absolutely, Fernando, it, it is important how you empower your, your, your staff, how much, 
how much decision making you give them, how much creativity you allow them. That's all important. Interesting. Any other questions for Igor? Igor, we appreciate your presentation. I, I thank you for inviting me. I uh, will uh, wait. If you need any help, please let us know. We'll be very happy to uh, provide you good service. Igor, thank you so much. I'll, I'll do a follow-up uh, call later this week and, um, okay. and catch up a little bit. So thank, thank you, you and, and best thank to you, you and best to Kelly. Okay. We'll do it. Thank, thank you. you, Igor. Mr. Mayor, yes. I do have a public comment. Okay. Hold on, Igor. Okay. I have a public comment from uh, Sherry Rice. And uh, she says, uh, what happened to the previous salary and compensation study that was done when Brent was city manager? Nothing. No action taken. Now proposing $90,000 for another study. Come on, give the city employees a raise and be done with it. Sherry Rice. And Mr. Mayor, members of council, because this is speaking to the item and not call the public, I can, if you're happy, if you'd like to, I can respond. The, the, um, no, we, uh, when I first came on board, they, they had just done, well, Mayor, you know the, the, the study that, that we did. That was, um, uh, uh, I think a $30,000 study that we had, um, we, we paid to, to get a piece of that from the county, a very complex study. Uh, they did. A, they added, I think, a fire a, a, a fire aspect to it, and and that was used for uh, I, I think a, a year or two here. Um, I mean, the, there there are some severe flaws in that study. It was outdated pretty much when it when it hit the ground here, um, and so we haven't been using that since then. We put it in tier places. Um, and then there's some confusion on the agenda items. Uh, there, uh, this is an information item only. We are not proposing the purchase of any or, or hiring of any compensation study at this point. I think she's convoluted uh, an item on the um, agenda further out. Um, and so um, uh, I don't, I, I, I couldn't even venture uh, an estimate on, on cost on this, um, but, I, but I believe it's in, in uh, we have the ability that we could afford it. Um, but, but I don't, I wanted just to see where council's direction is before we go forward. And I would ask, uh, you know, would council like to, to get some more information uh, or some, um, uh, get some ideas as to, you know, what we, we, we want to include in the study? Do we want to do just compensation? Do we want to do benefits and compensation? Do, you know, we can look at that a la carte list, maybe come back to council, see where we want to go, and then um, put together, if council would like to, um, put to, to put together a scope would be the the next thing um, but I, I still think there may be some time for some more information gathering and and ways to um, uh, to look at this this is a the first toe in the water on this um, I think uh, it went very well but um, I think there's probably more questions to come before we we make any any hard choices there go ahead yeah um, I think that's a good idea I think uh, uh, we need to probably drill down into this a little more so that we know exactly what we're wanting to uh, um, study and uh, what uh, really uh, would impact and give us our, our biggest benefit. Okay. Jesse, go ahead. I, I agree. I, I, I do think it's imperative that we do a study. Um, as far as what that scope is, I think that we as council need to come up with that and maybe get other bids as well. But I do think it's imperative of, with the way that we have already begun moving. I think it's imperative that I any mean, for our employees and to retain and uh, you know just as he said the three R's. I think it's imperative for this city to move forward that way. And we we need to make sure that it's a study that we understand. And I can comment on the study the previous study. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the study was uh, very hard to understand. There were too many components to it and too much breakdown. There was some good parts. They did comparison to different to populations, and, and they did give a raise in that one. But the study found that the deficiency in our city was not our lower-end workers. It was our supervisory-level workers, and those are the ones that took advantage of it. 
the council then voted on there were three levels of compensation and they took the lower road of it the, the third there was the third level would have cost the city a, a tremendous amount but they chose to concentrate uh, where deficiency was with the supervisors within our city and, and directors and 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 up were, were, were very very low compensated in our city and those are the ones that took advantage of that study so so let me oh mr mayor Go ahead, man. Uh, i would agree with <clears throat> councilman rios that you know we need to take our time with this we've got we're going to be looking at an item in tonight's budget that's very important to the whole structure of, of how we're running government and everything. And I think these two will complement each other, but I don't think it's time to say, let's do the salary and wage uh, process along with the HR process. Thank you. Any other comments? So with that, we could thank uh, Igor for. Thank you, Igor. I think we're done now. Igor, thank you. So item E, we have presentation by staff of COVID-19 restrictions and a possible phased in opening plan for Bespagawa, City Hall, sports field, and seasonal special events. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of council, I think um, uh, Danny's gonna throw up the uh, presentation that I got to him minutes before the meeting started and so I spent a lot of time on the background on this okay. if, and if you'd like to go the and there we go if you want to go to the next slide uh, do I I see it So um, the uh, I, I will tell you the in meeting with the COVID in, uh, incident team um, again AJ brings a lot of, of wisdom to us um, as we talk about about this um, we're we're doing well I think we see a progression where things are getting better but um, everybody's kind of waiting for. You know, when will the, will there be a change with the governor? Will the anything be backed off? We're seeing, uh, you know, people getting out more, opening, um, but everybody very careful, very tiptoeing through this. I think right now, this was it this week that schools opened live, and I think we're kind of waiting to see where we're going uh, with that. Um, we we don't want to rush to judgment. We don't want to rush to, uh, uh, as as AJ has always said, you know, uh, um, if you if you you're taking if you get 10 days of, of uh, antibiotic and you're feeling better by day three you don't want to just like stop doing it you got to be careful so whatever we're doing I think is, is working and I don't know who's clicking this okay so there it is oh I'm seeing the old one on the screen I guess so the um, so we're we're I think we're we're watching uh, we're still meeting in the mornings <clears throat> we're watching what's going on. We're we're going to see what happens with uh, uh, with the school openings. Um, we've taken some steps today. Council meeting limited open to the public. We have Michelle is here being usher, making sure that no one you know dog piles up and gets too close to each other. Um, we got the. I think that's working good. Um, we have the. Uh, we announced it on the, on the agendas, and we're able to invite people in and let people come on their own. That's really good. Um, so we have that limited opening, but council is still keeping their distancing and we're still doing the mask. Um, I talked to um, uh, uh, Rael to tonight before the meeting. Uh, they're doing 24 patrons a day. They're almost, they have um, four at a time, one hour slots, 15 minutes of cleaning between, half an hour lunch. And uh, on, there are days that they turn people away. So that's going well. We don't know. Um, uh, if there's a way we can expand that other than through the appointments and keep that so I, I don't we, we don't have a expectation to go into I think phase three would be the next of the library phase um, uh, active adult probably last uh, likely last to open because they are our uh, population that is most uh, sensitive to to this if um, you know you, you hate to 
you know you think you think it's almost over but if if someone would come back it was a pop-up and it was to go through um our active our active adult group uh, that would be just very um just, uh, be, be bad it would be bad we we've, we've had um like I say we've done well with keeping our impacted population safe uh, so I, I don't think until all of the active adults start to to come back in i don't think we're ready there um museum ball fields uh um liquor permits we we were treating museum and the fields and what we do out there all is one um i'm we uh, at the second half of this presentation i'm gonna bring uh liana in from the museum and talk about phase phase opening the museum that's the most comprehensive part of this presentation um we're looking at ball fields we're actually meeting with some of the people that that have standing applications i think we may look at separating the liquor permits from the ball fields um i think there's a we we look at what is uh, when we when we talk about the COVID team talks about this what is the likelihood are the precautions enough and what is the likelihood that the precautions can stay um they can hold up that they'll be carried out throughout the event and so i think we're going to look look at some of these and and um we may look at it as the the playing fields and then if you add that overlay of of an alcohol permit can they maintain what they commit to so but we're meeting with them i think maybe tomorrow uh, um I, I can't remember my schedule so but um we're we're looking at that also events the um events are the the tough ones um that is where we're we're trying to figure out you know are are, are we are, we don't want to be the hot spot there is a motorcycle event that's coming up at um uh the fairgrounds the county came to us because we're fairgrounds is in this in the city we have to give a special event permit it's a motorcycle event with no public attendance it's all the the just the participants and so we feel that was doable safe because of the size and and the the nature of it. its outdoors um we're let's see if I, my slide goes to um I, i'm trying to remember how i structured this because i changed it last minute um events i think is the toughest ones the were uh, halloween is is just problematic and if you want to have this discussion here I, I was not able to get a hold of molly um just with things going back and forth i don't know that that we were um that, that what we're thinking right now is old-fashioned halloween everybody looks to them their neighbors look to their street small groups churches organizations everybody does a little something uh, any one large event and everybody's going to whoop everybody's going to go to it it's like here's one event if if you look around look down your street look right to left and talk to your neighbors can we do halloween the the way it used to be done you know is there a church that wants to put a small thing together um are there um the 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 rotary could could they put a little something together i think things will happen naturally things people will still probably come downtown i don't think uh, people are going to come downtown because that's what they do but um i i think if we encourage a variety of events sponsored holistically from the ground up from people who are what is my kid going to do what do i feel safe having him do who are people are within my circle of trusted friends that i know the health of how can we get together and do something um i i think that's one way that we can encourage that we have no centralized halloween event but that we we ask people to to look and and find a way to make sure we enjoy the season and enjoy the event um when we get to oh the cdc came out with a, a recommendation not to have halloween this afternoon yeah and so. and i think that's that doesn't help our situation um having an organized i i'm as aj will say you, you there's no way you can socially distance 6000 people no, no. in downtown broad no way. so um but i i don't want to i don't want to announce that it's it's closed for sure um i do need to get with downtown and see if we have any alternative ideas and i apologize for just not having ability to get to um the downtown association um we're looking uh liana will talk about the museum and the um uh festival of lights uh there's some we got some problems there 
Um, one of the things that we were um, looking at is the parade. The parade is something different. The parade is where everybody gets together in a vehicle and they separate and they go down. Um, I was in my um, rotary meeting and somebody goes, well, can't we just televise it, the parade? It's like, okay. So I got Danny on the phone. He got a hold of um, uh, Sparklight and we do have the ability to have access to a, um, a channel. We have a YouTube feed. We have the channel. We could. Is uh, it? Somebody forgot to <coughs> the meeting. Mayor, are you shaking your head at my idea of the train? <laughs> no, on that train. Okay. So, they're just, you know, they're just going back and forth. I think they saw they're on the agenda and they're going. Yeah. Back and forth. <laughs> they want to let us know they're here. Yeah. They, well, I guess they can't go on the track either. No. No, they're stuck. They're just circling. They're yeah. Oh, gee. <laughs> I did. I, yeah, <laughs> so, but, but I mean, so so we're we're looking at what's the possibility of us putting up cameras on the somewhere and and have the parade go by and people can watch it from home. Um, we can record it. We can live feed it. We can put it on the cable channel. And it'd be nice to have a cable our cable channel up and running. We could broadcast the meetings. We could do um, um, calendar uh, slideshows going on. So we're looking at that. Um, I, I know that the, the Rotary is looking at a Janu uh, January 30th, February 1st date for the um, casino night. I think that's the one event that they're banking on, we're banking on, that, that it, everything should be cleaned up by then. But it's really kind of hit and miss. And so we're, we're going through looking at each one. The lead time is the big problem. Uh, the lead time on the Festival Lights, and Leanna's going to talk about that. Um, so uh, it's, it's tough. Any, any feedback on events from, from council at this point before we go forward? I have a quick question there. Go ahead, Fernando. Um, okay, so I, I get the downtown big event because that is just the whole purpose of that is to bring people together, which is not a good idea at this time. But there's not – does anybody see that we're going to recommend to people not to pass out candy from their homes because – that's my favorite thing is I we sit out in front of the house and we pass out candy to the kids to come around. Most of them come as a family unit, you know, then they're gone and then here comes some more kids. Um, is there any idea that that should not occur or are we kind of staying out of that? Um, Mr. Um, Councilman Shipley, Mr. Mayor, Members Council, the, I, I think that our responsibility is to not be the, not allow a gigantic density event. Um, I think that the density is where you have the, the problems of an outbreak or if somebody goes in there and they're, um, they're compromised and they, sh and they share it all around and, and a bunch of people come out of there with a hot spot and we have a, a, bu a, a boom in cases. I think that um, I think the best thing is to allow people to do it naturally and, and if you feel comfortable letting your child go to, to neighbors' houses because you know those neighbors, I don't see the city stepping in and saying, no, you shouldn't do that. I think that is probably the best way to keep it spread out to keep the density down. Um, I, I think that uh, Councilman Leatham had talked about we do early and people start, you know, they, they spread it out, start at four rather than six, you know, and, and, and get that time to where there's no one time when a bunch of people are all, all at the same time and compacted around any one thing. But um, I, don't, I don't see us as the going around saying, you know, others shouldn't do what they believe is safe. I just think that we have to be very careful what we endorse and whether it's safe so let me go back to the any other questions or comments okay that's a tough one mayor go ahead freddie i have a question um so you know i i, I appreciate the fact that that staff is starting to look at uh how we can soften up you know uh when we were getting into the thick of the pandemic, um, a lot of the considerations were given by um, percentages and infection rates and things like that. And, and um, thankfully, uh, at this point, we're uh, probably at the lowest that we've seen in, in quite some time. Um, but, you know, speaking specifically to the ball fields and sports, you know, we do have a, a good number of active adults um, in the community. Um, I know there's a, a strong uh, request to open the fields. Um, and I would just like to say that I, I think uh, because, uh, 
you know, we have restaurants that are open in confined spaces with limited spacing, but a ball field is a wide open area. Um, and baseball or softball for that matter, um, you're well away from six feet of each other. Um, you know, if I know the base paths are at least 60 feet away from each other. So uh, I think those kinds of considerations should be really uh, given. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure how that ties in with the alcohol or not, um, but uh, I think we really need to start thinking about how we're gonna soften up some of these open areas um, to allow activities. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. So, so then, and this direction helps. This direction helps. They, um, let me go back to the PowerPoint. <laughs> um, before we go to Leanna, um, the, the only other thing I want to talk about, um, and my PowerPoint is not nearly as responsive as, oh wait. Sorry, I got a little click happy here. Um, so uh, City Hall reopening, uh, asked, uh, we've been talking about um, City Hall. Um, uh, we started with City Hall with uh, essential staff only. That's where we're at right now, A team, A team B team, uh, making sure that, that if somebody goes down, we have backup, we have people separated working um, up apart, and, and we've been very efficient and done well with that. Um, the essential people, water office courts, um, and um, and uh, clerk has been in here a little bit more than uh, uh, probably the, the one office that's been here a, a lot. The um, the next days uh, next I think phase would be a phase two the uh, rotation of exempt staff coverage. What I hope to to begin is as soon as this week or as soon as I you know get this going. Um, I think we try to at least have one um, mid level manager or, or high level. The director all the way up to myself um, in the building at all time make sure that that we have coverage we we'll probably break it up to one person a day where they're covered and we can swap around but just so that that we do have a um, uh, an exempt person uh, at the building at all times I think that would be helpful and something we can easily uh, align the um, uh, opening of the offices for uh, phase three would be to open all offices to a, a single only um, I the the one thing that when we talk about opening city hall is how do we see and we have because of our our space how do we see you know two people in the same office indoors you know working with masks eight hours a day are we to that point if we're still uh the the 15 minutes in close contact with another person uh, when you have two days lead that somebody could be infected and not even know it and and uh, then you have two people who, who work in the same office, usually in the same department. I, I think that is the biggest hurdle. When we're safe enough to where we can put two people in an office together. Right now, one person in an office wouldn't be that bad, but um, but two people in an office is um, is going to be that we will know it's pretty much over when we can get to that. Um, and then phase. Um, but right now, I think I think the phase three would be um, allowing people to come back to offices, but without doubling up. And then normal operations would be phase four. Um, but what we, we did talk to um, uh, water office, uh, you know, the window has worked very well, uh, but in, in the long haul, what they would rather see is some uh, protection along the counter. With the counter, you can help more people. They, they're not lined up, they can spread out. You can go back and, back and forth, you can see better. So I, I, uh, my, what we're hearing from the water office is that the, the window is a temporary solution, not the permanent solution. And so we do have some co um, CARES money to put into um, putting some uh, plexiglass um, protections and doing some modifications. Uh, we want to look at that. We also have some money in for upgrade to the conference room. Uh, we were thinking about conferences. I, I, I thought to myself, well, we'll know COVID's over when we can all get in that conference room and we can sit around and, and have and, and not feel like we're infecting each other we're not the breathing of each other and even with masks um, but it's not going back to you know human meetings all the time our vendors people we work with they know everybody knows how to zoom and if you're trying to get somebody to come up from the valley when they can zoom in and sometimes it's, it's easier if we're going to go down the valley to zoom in so so I have um, IT looking at putting together uh, uh, some big screens and 
teleconferencing thing so you can do a combo Zoom live meeting. Uh, a lot of times when you have a, a combination of Zoom and live, um, the people who are live together get left out because you've got Zoom, you've got everybody right there. But we've got to find a way that we can, and this is a, a good combination Zoom live format. And so we want to be able to recreate this. We do come in here a lot, but we want to be able to recreate that into the um, uh, into the, the the staff meet uh, the conference room, so we're um, uh, and so we can give the courts back their chambers, because sometimes we're in here and they come marching in. And um, the other thing we're thinking is while we do have everybody out of here, uh, we do have carpet in the in the budget, and so um, what a better time than right now to talk to Jeannie about this about um, get the carpet replacement before everybody comes back, uh, get that taken care of. Um, and um, and then I, th I think that uh, there are some we have found some some benefits to people working from home. Um, it, it's not the the nightmare or the inefficiencies that, that some people think uh, there there's a place for it. So I think we need to develop a, a work from home policy. It's it's a it's one of those perks. It's not not pay, but um, and to some people it can be a perk. To some people it can be <laughs> look to Shelley can be stressful. The um, the uh, I know that. Um, it, it depends on the situation. It's the manager and the director and, and the, the person to figure out what works for, for everyone. Um, and it's about efficiency. It's about that, that combination of the, the, for that department, how do they function the best? And so, I, but we need to put a policy in place because as I, I, I listened to um, a conversation, I hope I haven't rep repeated this before, um, somebody, uh, another city manager had said, you know, if somebody come to me and say, how do I move 400 people to work from home? Uh, it, I would say, give me nine months and I'll get a policy and I'll get the ordering done, everything like that. And, and this man city manager had done it in two weeks, you know, moving 300 people to all of a sudden to work from home. Um, there, we, we need to put those policies and procedures in place, but there is a place for it. And, um, it's something that we were able to do because we had laptops and we had staff that was flexible and we had the internet uh, and, and the, the cameras and, and we're able to do that. And then it's worked out wonderful for our, our needs to have that, that flexibility uh, that, that good, good hardworking people can, will, will do their job, whether you put them at a desk or in a field or, you know, hang them from the ceiling. They'll, they're going to they're gonna do their job. So that's what we're looking at on... Um, how we reopen City Hall. Any questions or comments from Council? Mr. Mayor. So, Paul, we're in phase one right now. I, and forgive me, because yeah. I, when we had discussed this when we were in the pandemic, I had mistakenly heard that myself, I thought we were in phase one, which would have been phase three now. So I was under the assumption that every office would be open with, with an A team and B team. But to see this now, it's it's opened my eyes that that was, that well, was this, not what I thought. I don't think I ever had a formal phase uh, no, you, schedule. You had said that there would be A team and B team. Yeah, and so and the, and the, keep the, the A team and B team is keep people separated so that, that if one goes down, the other one can come in. Correct, but and, now and, I'm to understand that yeah. there's nobody in City Hall correct, currently other than uh, clerk and two up front and right, what, the, you, what you've deemed essential. Yes. Uh, okay. Those are people who just don't have the, it's just the, the job function doesn't allow working from home. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. So as Leanna is. I'll comment on that, Paul, too. I've spoke to some uh, other individuals or other cities and other businesses, really, and I think this is going to be some of the new norm is that uh, some of these uh, entities are not even looking at even doing anything in or coming in house to work till after January mm -hmm. they're looking at remote and I think it's going to be more and more of that we're going to see remote people that have a job in the valley maybe moving to to globe or it's a more rural community and doing their work from from remotely from here I mean that's what we're seeing I they, I, I I think they've seen a, a a great success with with uh, accountability and and productivity and and I think that's something that they're looking at in the future to 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 work from home. We're seeing more and more of that. But it's up to the director within that department to make to, to make that decision, I would think, if if they if they feel they're 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 productive at home. 
the, 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 first, the, the first hurdle is, is can the job be done effectively from home? Uh, you know, is it, is it a job where, where, like the water office, you, you have to be there to, to meet the people. The, with the, the, um, the same with, with the, the, municipal, the court, you have to be there. Um, finance is a, a good example where pretty much everybody can, can work from home and interact and, and they, they scan and copy and, and do things and, and that is very effective and um, has, has kept us, uh, kept those kinds of things working. So um, then, you, then you have the ability for people to, um, you know, uh, they can still communicate. Um, I, I, I will tell you that a lot of times when you're, when you're in City Hall, there's a, a, a comment I always say is you have to make sure that the, the urgent doesn't get in the way of the important. And sometimes when there's a, you're in City Hall, there's a lot of urgency, there's a lot of, and, and there's a loss there in the, in the meetings and catching up. And so the, the, the hallway conversations that we used to have to get things figured out, we now do that through Zoom. And so then you're, you're, you're not sitting there with people running by, popping in offices and things like that. There's pros and cons to everything. There is no perfect work environment. But there's not to say that, that, that for different people, <coughs> the more styles of work you have, the more methods that, that people operate, the, the more variety, the more people can hit their, their performance peak. Um, you, you, when you have that, that variety, then people can, can find what really fits their, their motion. Um, I think everybody knows I'm a night owl, okay, and that's where I get my stuff done, and that's how I achieve. If somebody took my nights away from me, I would I would have a problem with it. you know I would I would just not be able to to do as well as I as I have. Everybody has that that portion where they really feel like they're they're humming along, but there's a there's a respect and and a, um, a a trust that goes with managers, as as Igor said, you know the the managers that that give the responsibility and expect the um, the results, but um, but allow them to you know to achieve. Uh, most people, I'd rather be given a goal rather than a task. And the more we can do that, and more people step up to uh, rise into the occasion, getting things done, taking care of, thinking progressively. What am I missing? What could go wrong? And and that's the type of proactive, high-performing employees we're trying to fill uh, the seats in the in the the slots in in the city of Globe. Um, but it it's changed the norm. I. You know, when you're looking at real estate, you know, we're like, oh, we can't hire people, we don't have enough offices. Well, maybe we don't need that many more offices. So it's, it's, it's going to take time to adjust, evaluate, and, and the, each department director and managers need to work, see how their staff works, how their people works, what works best to make sure that the job gets done. Uh, and and I'm, I'm amazed at the, the pretty, I, I hate to say seamless, but We've done pretty well in transitioning without too many hiccups here. So, any other questions on City Hall? Okay. Okay. So, Leanna, are you up there? Out in the cloud somewhere? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So I hijacked the front end of your go. presentation. Go uh, ahead. Sorry. Okay. Now, I don't know, Paul, if what you have on the screen is, I'm on my phone, so I can't see the TV yeah. screens, um, and I know that you kind of did a little I, PowerPoint. I, I don't know if that's the same as what I have. It, it have. I've not touched your slides. From here on forward, it's exactly the same presentation you gave me. Okay, because we had the discussion. I'm not able to share it from my end, so if you're going to share it, you have to do it. Yeah, and we can see it now. Okay, good. Okay, I wasn't sure because I can't read it because it's tiny on my phone screen, so I couldn't tell. Okay. But, hello, everyone. Hello. So, um, I'll just go over quickly kind of what the, the current thought for the museum is. Um, this is. This is something that has been discussed with the city and the COVID team. Um, so, you know, if you guys have suggestions or thoughts, um, definitely, you know, we, we're looking for, for thoughts on all this, but this is kind of as a group, what we've, what we've thought to do um, is doing a, a kind of a soft opening on Monday, October 5th. Um, and with that, we would do partial hours, uh, Monday through Friday, nine to 3.30. 
and I'll kind of list off some of the, the points there. Um, we're thinking right now, this is just temporary, uh, Monday through Friday until I have an open position that we just got posted and then I'll be getting my other staff member back from the PD. So when all this started, I had two staff, they went to the PD temporarily. Um, PD actually acquired one, which, you know, they, they hired her and that that's great. So I have an open position. And then the other position was essentially brand new when all this started. So I, I have to retrain her. So right now I don't have any trained staff. So it's gonna take me um, a little bit to get both people in there and trained. Um, we're thinking of, of doing a redo, uh, reduced opening hours, closing an hour early to allow us time to deep clean at the end of each shift. Um, and then the thought is to resume the regular hours after we evaluate the, the soft opening um, when we're fully staffed and everybody's trained. And then of course, pending the status of, of the pandemic and the recommendation, uh, recommendations of the COVID team. So that's kind of the, the first thought, the idea for for the soft opening um, on the 5th. Before I move on, any comments on that? Have you gauged how comfortable the staff is with that? Um, <clears throat> well, being that I only have one other staff right now, <laughs> um, not... I, I mean, I wouldn't want to say she's uncomfortable, but there's definitely a lot of questions for sure. Um, I've got kind of what we're going to do as far as safety protocols and sanitation protocols. Um, I think, you know, I think my, my one lone staff member is happy to, to still have their position um, for sure. Um, as far as safety, you know, I, I don't know. I can't. I don't want to speak for her, but. Well, Leanna, how about you? Do you how do you feel safe opening? Well, I have different thoughts on it. Um, I know we kind of talked about it in our, our last meeting with the COVID team. I kind of feel like it's a bit odd for us to be open. And I don't get me wrong. I want to open. I'm ready to. I want to open, but. I don't know, it's a bit odd for us to be open and receive all these customers, but other departments aren't doing that. So I don't know, I, I'm i kinda on the fence about it, really. I mean, you know, it, it seems like it's time, but it also doesn't seem like it, so I don't know. Um, again, you know, City Hall's not opening because it's not safe, but we're opening. And I'm not trying to be negative about it, I'm just, stating you know it's kind of i'm not quite sure how to feel about that well uh, question mr Mayor. Wait a minute. uh Leanne, are you are you anticipating the soft opening on the fifth because that's about the time snowbirds start coming around um yeah there's a few reasons why this was determined yes that's when we start to pick back up um and also this is kind of the direction that we're receiving um not, not that I'm objecting to it. It's just kind of the, the direction that we're receiving and October is when we start to pick back up for, for customers, so. Okay. Well, Leanna, I think I, uh, just a, a side note, uh, let's, um, let's have a sidebar conversation. I just wanna check in with you and, and let's uh, continue that conversation, but, but go ahead with your presentation. Sure. Um, so we talked about um, if we do open on the 5th, some of the safety protocols for our staff. Um, we'll all do temperature checks every morning at the start of each shift. Um, we would plan to wear masks when the customers are present and then when we're working together and we can't socially distance because um, there's just times where we won't be able to. Um, I would also, we're going to try to either wash our hands or sanitize after each customer transaction. And then, of course, we'd follow um, the current city guidelines pertaining to, to COVID-19 protocols. As far as our visitors, we would um, not allow more than 12 people in the building at a time. Um, the fire department determined what our 
our gift shop occupancy would be and cut in half um, would be about 12 would be max at, at one time. So we, we, we would have to um, to keep track of how many people we have in and, and stop people from coming in if it was over more than 12. Um, people would be required to wear masks when they entered the building. And then, of course, you know, we have all the standard signs up and encourage everybody to social distance six feet um, if they're in separate parties, of course. As far as sanitation, um, high contact areas would be sanitized hourly or as necessary. I mean, obviously, if there's nobody in there, then we, we wouldn't need to go around and wipe everything down. Um, same for the restrooms. Uh, merchandise is kind of an iffy thing just because not everything we have could be sanitized or wiped down or cleaned. You know, you can't go after somebody touches all the books on the bookshelf, you can't go wipe those down. So, you know, that's kind of a depending on what it is kind of thing. Um, just like the stores, though, I suppose, you know, you go to Walmart and Fry's, they don't go around and wipe everything down after you've touched it. Um, we would try to put some signage up in a positive way to discourage people from touching merchandise without actually needing to. I mean, people are going to do what they're going to do, but we would try to encourage people to not go around touching everything if, if you know, they don't necessarily need to. Um, and then again, we would try to close an hour early just to allow us time to clean everything. The auditorium chairs, artifact display cases, um, restrooms, all the doors, um, and our workstations. Um, any comments so far? Leon, on that slide, I don't see. Are are, are they gonna? Are you gonna request any protection at the counter, to, like the other businesses have, where they have plexiglass or anything that can give we you? We do have protection? a plexi in place. Um, Ruben made us a plexi, so when you first walk in and we have our little register station where you would come in and pay for admission or for your merchandise, we do have a, okay. a, a plexiglass there. What about, what about uh, requiring visitors to wear some sort of glove? Um, I mean, that's a good question for, for you guys and the, the COVID team. I don't know. Um, you know, I think, I think, like for the masks example, for example, most people will wear masks, but you're gonna have people that just won't. Um, I don't know if you try to ask people to wear gloves, if if how well that would go. Um, I don't know. You know, other businesses probably aren't doing that. I don't know. Leanna. It's it's a question for for I think a lot of these things. Um, relying on the the covid response team for for everybody's thoughts um and ideas are, are kind of important to me so that could be something we could we could post and and see if they thought it'd be a good idea now if you i don't know if you do that if you if you put gloves out for people to use i don't know liana oh sorry instead of using gloves could you require them to sanitize their hands prior to coming in and leaving a sanitization bottle there for them? I mean, we're definitely going to have hand sanitizers as many places as we can. Um, I, again, I don't know if you can require somebody to do that. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things. The body shop does. Yeah. The, the, yeah, or the drift in does before you, do they? Before you enter. You the sanitizer that might be something that we do again i i don't know um i would ask the the yeah. team and, and you guys if that's something that you think would be a good idea then we could certainly try to do that i mean we will have sanitizer placed in strategic locations um but if if we want to go as far as asking people to use it then we can certainly put that in our plan and and mr mayor members council uh, we we need to make sure that we have a, a comfort level and if 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 the comfort level is if that everybody wash their hands before they coming in, uh, absolutely masks are required, and and anybody who comes in without a mask, we would just have you know we would deal with that. Uh, it, uh, you know the enter mask will be required to enter the building, and and uh, you know not going to um, make you have to be the the COVID cop that that kicks them out. We'll have a plan for that, but I think if. Um, 
you know, again, let's make sure we, we get the right comfort level for you and your staff. Yeah. Uh, Mayor? You, Mayor? Go ahead, Mike. Uh, I think we should treat this as any other business. We're, you know, I have a business. We have a hand sanitizing station at the front door with uh, masks. Gloves, I don't think. Nobody's wearing gloves. So I think uh, they should follow the same protocol as everybody else is doing. There's no reason to do more than anybody else. That's just my personal feelings. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor? Go ahead, Fernando. Um, so I like to play disc golf. And uh, so we didn't think that the disc golf store would be open. But sure enough, we went in there and the guy said, if you want to come in, you got to wear a mask and you got to wear gloves. Because why? Because if you're going to buy a disc, a disc you're going to touch it. You're going to feel it and make sure it's a disc that you want. You got to read it to figure out whether or not it's so I thought it was a really good solution. And you don't have to be a customer if you're not comfortable with that. So and we don't have to serve everybody if you're if, if the comfort level with the staff is that this is what you require because you have merchandise for sale that people will be picking up and um, you can buy a box of gloves for they're fairly inexpensive and um, I don't think that would be out of bounds um, I went to Peter Piper pizza yesterday and their requirement was as you walked in they took your temperature and you had to sanitize your hands right in front of them before you walked in any further. And so if you wanted to eat there, you, you did it and you went and ate. Um, so I don't know. I, I think, I think the important thing for me is that you guys feel like you're safe. And if we're, if we don't feel like we're safe, then I don't know why arbitrarily we pick a day out of the thin air and say, this is a day it's safe when, I don't know what's all changed that much as far as the pandemic. My personal view. Leanna, do you want to continue? Yeah, I can continue. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll continue and then we can kind of talk a little more um, about ideas and, and thoughts on it. Um, essentially, what I went over right now would kind of be the phase one. Um, and then for us, I know everybody, all these different departments and cities that, you know, we keep throwing phases out there and, and it's not really consistent, but this is just kind of for the museum. It would be a phase one, phase two kind of thing. Um, phase two would be we're open back to normal hours, um, but that would be, of course, you know, it's going to be determined um, after we see how a soft opening would go. Um, recommendations from the COVID team and the level of the pandemic. So phase two, you know, we can't, I, I can't throw a date out there and say when that would be for sure. Um, we would have to determine that later. And then also would de be dependent on if I have a full staff again and they're trained. So phase two reopening for normal hours is just one of those things that still, you know, would be sometime in the future we would have to determine that um Leanna, so I, I might yes. have screwed up your powerpoint slide i'm not sure what slide you're supposed to be on or you want to be on Should um <laughs> well there, there, i'm uh, actually on five okay and i'm my eyes i don't know what yours looks like because i know you changed yeah. i yeah. think you did something and i can't see it so yeah, we're, we're at phase two i think right now so yes yes that's where we're at um, so that, before I, I talk about Parks and Rec and, and Festival of Lights, that's kind of the idea for, for the museum. Um, and I don't want you guys to think that we feel unsafe or, or uncomfortable. Um, it just kind of is, you know, everything's kind of iffy right now. So I'm, I'm just, just kind of speaking from the heart, this is what was discussed with the museum and at the direction of, of, you know, the city and the COVID team. So, you know, if you guys have different thoughts or feelings about it, you know, that's what we're, that's where we're here talking about it. So, um, you know, feel free to, to let us know what you think. If you think it's, it's a good idea, 
if you want to change some things, that's that's why we're here. So, any other thoughts before I talk about Parks and Rec and Festival of Light? Mr. Mayor? Mike? Yeah. Uh, is it is it absolutely necessary that we have to open BESH by October 5th? No, no. This is a... The, we, we were looking at phases and, um, you know, looking at, at, at what we could do. We knew we have traffic picked up. Um, and so uh, we're trying to figure out what we can do in the way of, a, uh, you know, a, a smart opening. Um, but the uh, if, if there's a, a discomfort by staff, I, I did not... I uh, was not fully understanding the, the the depth of that. And so I'm sitting here thinking, you know, maybe we can do the, you know, have something where you're you're there and inviting people to, to, to join, uh, do something where there's more separation. I think the, 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 when you come inside with people, when you're in the same air conditioning system, when you're in the same rooms, that's where you worry about that. And so I'm trying to think in my head is how we could alleviate that. If we could make this, uh, bring some of it outside or, or some way to have uh, even a pup tent or something like that, maybe as a transitional. So, so let, me, let me look and see if there's something that uh, doesn't seem to have as much uh, angst about it. Uh, because peace of mind is a very important thing for every employee. And if we don't have peace of mind, we're, we're not going to be, we're not going to be reach our full potential. And you there, there is other, other than allowing people are going to come and all, all summer long, they can come, they can go around just getting them into the museum is what we're hoping, getting to, to <coughs> do some shopping. But I, I think we can take another look at this. Yeah. I think, uh, I think, I think she mentioned 12 people in the building at one time. Would be the max. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. we were looking at maybe, three. Maybe just cut that down. Well, I, and I think we were talking about three three groups, you know. So you have one group maybe looking in the museum, one group maybe shopping, one group watching the video, and yeah, not so and and keeping them but apart. If you reduce that number, maybe they'll feel more comfortable. Yeah. That's what so I'm so I think I think the <coughs> definitely need to do a little uh, yeah I don't think tweaking we on this. push it until we're comfortable. Yeah, and and no, there there is nothing there's nothing firm on October fifth, Mr. Mayor. Uh, could you utilize the auditorium then? as part of her gift shop and rather than them sitting to watch the movie yeah. have the movie playing while they're looking around the gift shop so then it's a bigger area they're more spread out yeah. and it's easier to maintain and not feel so claustrophobic with 12 people inside of where right the gift and, shop is now. and again we we might i mean we could go down to one one family and have you know set it up to you know you're walking around the outside you come in uh, I think the auditorium area is the, is the safest area because that's the largest air pocket. Um, I, Leanne, I, I think you, if you have people walking through the museum, though, there's got to be a little oversight, or do you have cameras? I mean, do you feel comfortable if, if somebody's on, if you're in the, um, the, the bigger area and they're walking around the relics, uh, are you comfortable with that? Or? Well, I mean, it's... It you could certainly try to split it up by room like that, but I, I don't think it's very feasible for us, just one, because it's, it's we're such a small staff. I mean, sometimes it's just one person working there, so I don't know how we would, you know, herd one group into here while the other one's there and make people wait. Like, I don't think it would work that way, and the way our, our building is set up, you know, you the entrance is in the gift shop. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it would be something where we could just move the gift shop into the auditorium um, or, you know, it, we can't just shut down like the gift shop and only let people in the auditorium or the museum because it's the way the building is situated. It just, I don't know, if I had like four people walking around, you know, directing people where to go, <laughs> that would be a different story, but it, it doesn't really work. Um, we could definitely reduce it and say like only six people, but it's just a weird thing. You know, I mean, we might have a family of seven show up and then, you know, 10 minutes later you have one single person that shows up. Um, and I don't know how you regulate, okay, well, there's a family in here, so you have to wait outside until they're done. And I don't know how long they're going to be. I mean, I could give them a time limit, I suppose, but then it's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's all these, there's, there's a lot of weirdness to, to trying to put 
stipulations on on people you know even with the 12 people when we first start if we were to do october 5th um it's not quite busy yet so the 12 people wouldn't be too bad but as the season progresses the 12 people will be a problem i you know i don't know how long we would we would be in this phase but like let's say for example if it was february and we were still doing the same thing with yeah. only 12 people that's going to be a problem because we get like 90 people a day no, so let's let's you know. um I, I think I think definitely council's direction is for for you and I to get together. Let's revisit this, get out there, walk it some more, and 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 get with um with your your one staffer, and let's let's have a a discussion and see what what seems to make sense. To, um, yeah, and I'm not I'm not saying you know that I don't want to open. I think it just kind of came on a little fast, and so there's a lot of questions still um, on on our part. So, so let's, let's, not not trying to be a negative nelly or anything i'm just kind of you know talking about so, different thoughts on it so quickly there. do you want to cover the two slides on the parks and rec and the festival lights yeah um, mayor, okay. mayor I, i'd like to speak on this uh, before we move on go ahead Freddie. so um i i think yeah the going the, the path of splitting hairs to see what is feasible in what office is is probably a little more tasking than we we want to go and this is a recommendation i'm not trying to lead or guide the COVID team but just generally speaking i i think uh the thought process should be you know the the uh the guidelines that are that are mandated by uh by city and and state um and and treat all offices equally um library besh city hall uh, I don't know that one would would change um, based on numbers or or you know how many people can go in and go out. I, I think to to make it as simple as possible because you know it is so complicated. If we start splitting hairs, it's just going to make it even more complicated and probably impossible to even make it happen. But my recommendation is just stay stay uniform uh, so that all city staff are are treated equally for one. Um, and and uh, and we we find a a comfort zone uh, where we can softly open uh, conduct city business um, again based on on the uh, uh, the uh, the rates of, of infection uh, within our community and within the state and and again you know we we were guided to close down by these numbers and I think we should start thinking about the reverse order of how we're going to open up based on the infection rates now you know nobody knows where this is going to go if it's if we're going to have a another surge or not um but around the world literally around the world you see that um societies open up when the numbers are down uh and so uh keeping the safe keeps you know the the mass um obviously the, i I'm a firm believer in the mass. I think they've done a tremendous value to to our society in keeping keeping the infection rate down. Um, but I, just as a whole, I, I just don't know that splitting hairs is going to be our, our answer. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Leanna. Do you want to talk about the the last two slides there, real quick? Yeah. So um, apart from the museum, we like Paul said earlier, we we're treating parks and recreation different as kind of its own little entity, uh, which it is. But uh, we talked about not if we were to reopen the museum now about not reopening those services right away. Um, and and just to reiterate, the parks and recreation it's it's the use of the ball fields. Um, it's also the, the liquor permits, but it's also rental of electrical and water spigots in the park for parties and, and bounce houses. So that's all parks and recreation. Um, and we, we talked about the city not wanting to necessarily reopen that right now. I think they want to have further discussions. Just, you know, a big part of it was the not encouraging gatherings of, of 50 plus. Um, I know that there might be some issues as far as 
um, public works being able to go and clean like the dugouts and that sort of thing. I don't want to speak for public works, but I think that was part of, of the thought. Um, and then also with the, the liquor permit, I mean, you know, if you start to do that, things might get a little loosey goosey. And then also with the utilities, um, primarily all that stuff is on the weekend. Um, and my, my museum staff is the, the one that takes care of that. And I don't currently have any weekend trained staff. So I think all of that kind of, we wanted to put that on hold a little bit and, and talk more about that. So, um, that's kind of where we're at with parks and recreation right now. I know, I know there's a lot of push and pull with it. So, um, any thoughts or comments on that? No, I think we're good. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and then last but not least festival of lights, um, as a group, we all kind of collectively decided that it probably wouldn't be a good idea to proceed with the, the festival, which was, I had slated for December 5th. Um, I, there's an obvious reason, you know, large events are still iffy right now. Um, but there, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, so currently, you know, by December 5th, we don't know if gatherings of 50 plus will be safe. Last year, for example, we had 800 plus people come in a matter of four hours. So, so there's that. Um, we don't know for sure if at that time we'll have museum staff, enough public work staff, or DOC. The DOC play a huge part in helping to to get the Festival of Lights um, up and going. Basically, they're the ones that do most of the physical going and putting all the luminaries out the day before and they do the cleanup. So we, um, we rely on them pretty heavily for it. And we don't know for, you know, when we're going to have them back. Um, advertising is a big thing for it. I mean, advertising locally is, is one thing, but I always do a couple of big magazines um, in the Valley and some other things that is very time critical um that's not something that you can kind of just at the last minute advertise for um, my deadline for it is kind of october 1st to get all the information out there the date the times that sort of thing um at this time we don't know if our vendors or entertainers would be guaranteed um you know you might have some that agree to come but you might have others that you know don't want to come set up because of the pandemic we don't really know everything's kind of iffy with that right now um, another big thing with it is we've gotten to the point the past three or four years we've had to provide shuttle services because there's not enough parking um so on average we get more than 200 riders in that four hours um and we use the cobra valley transit and i just don't know that we would be able to social distance that um and then also being closed and you know not having my staff there the preparation has has been hindered so for all these reasons uh, we we all kind of figured it, it probably would be a, in our best interest to cancel the Festival of Lights this year. What's Council's thoughts on this? If they're not comfortable, I'm, I'm fine with them. Not yeah, I think the, the lead time right now is passed, and so I, I, if unless Council has any other direction, we're going to formally announce that uh, Festival of Lights uh, um, for December 2020 will be canceled. That's fine. That's okay. Fine. It just it, it it's not well, able to pull it off. The governor has Yeah, we don't know what's going to be there. Really so. have. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's not something that you can just pick up, you know, the week before and, and decide to do. So, you know, it, it's it, it's a tough decision and there's going to be a lot of disappointment. But at this time, it's just, it's hard to say that we could do it. Leanna, yeah, I know, and, and like I say, I appreciate you working with us, and, and I, you know, when you explained exactly how much this took, we, you know, we saw there's no other choice. So, unless Council had any other questions, Leanna, thank you so much for hanging out with us, and, and we'll be in touch.
Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Very much. I want to request that item three F be moved to the uh, the end uh, toward uh, towards the end of the action items. If the council's okay with that for presentation, timing, yeah. timing with the attorney. Uh, yeah. F. Huh? Yeah. Next, the last one on presentation. Move it to the last part of uh, action item. Okay. So that'll that'll move us to consent calendar. And we have matters listed on the consent calendar are considered to be routine and be enacted by one motion, one vote. Public hearing items are designated with an asterisk prior to the consideration of the, cons of the consent agenda. The mayor will ask whether any member of the public wishes to remove a public hearing item for separate consideration. Members of the council and or staff may remove any item for separate consideration. We have item A, consideration of waiver of section 2-4-10 prior discussion rule to allow action on the balance of the consent agenda. Accounts payable, $302,765.07. Consideration of approval of council minutes. June 3rd, 2020 special meeting minutes. Consideration of agreements and purchases less than 25,000. Consideration of the August building permit report. Council will consider and possible approve the fiscal year 1920 fourth quarter distribution of bed tax funds to the, in the amount of $6,914.92 to the Globe Miami Regional Chamber of Commerce to be paid from account number 10-51-51900 General Fund Community Organizations. Consideration to approve the placement of the Kathy Kanyas free little library box that we will be placed at City Hall in Veterans Park. Consideration of Council appointment of NJ1 to the Globe Arts Advisory Commission. Do we have anybody from the staff, the public, or the Council to want to remove any of these separately? No, Ms. Mayor, I don't see any efforts to, to pull any. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Mayor no, nobody pulling anything from the uh, consent calendar. I move that we approve it as read. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, for approval of consent agenda as read. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstaining? Motion passed. We have no new business items, so we'll go to action items. And item A is consideration and possible creation appointments up to three members of the Council of the Mayor's Employee Benefits Task Force. In last uh, council meeting, we did bring this up. Uh, we did have three members at, uh, of council that wish to be on this uh, uh, for task force. I would like to be on it. And, and at this point, I would like to appoint uh, Freddie Rios and Jesse Leatham to that, uh, to that task force also at this time. I also want to consider, and, and I don't know if that's possible, that we include uh, maybe one of our employees or, or employees or two that we can get some input from them too. I don't know if that's possible, but I'd like to get some input from our employees too. Yeah, be because it's not, they're not elected official, I, I do believe that you could put uh, as a sitting member, I hadn't thought about this, but there's no reason um, open meeting law wise that you couldn't have a sitting member on there uh, from, from the staff. Yeah, have some staff, yeah, one or two, I don't know, I guess we'll, we'll meet first and we'll decide whether, uh, w w how many we would like to see on there. Okay. Okay. We'll need a motion for that. If so with a, with a recommendation by the mayor, you, the, the body needs to uh, motion second to approve the, the recommendation. I make a, uh, a motion. Second. Accept the, uh, the committee as the task force as the mayor has recommended and create the count and create an extra seat with a uh, city employee second as requested a motion a second for approval of the uh, members uh, listed on the task force any further discussion all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed nay any abstaining motion passed thank you Item B is consideration to approve Ordinance 865, an ordinance to amend the City Code Chapter 14, Section 14-9-6 by adding 14-9-6-F, 
habitual offenders and approval of the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendations for approval. Shelley, can you read Ordinance 865, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance number 865, an ordinance of the City of Globe, Arizona, amending the Globe City Code by amending Section 14-9-6, Procedures for Conditional Use Permits, and adding Section 14-9-6-F, Habitual Offenders. Is Council pleased with that reading? Yes. yes. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, last meeting, we presented this uh, ordinance for the first time uh, to give the uh, a little bit of teeth to our our code on enforcing enforcing uh, conditions placed on conditional use permits. I believe in your packet there is a implementation plan that was asked for. Um, we put that together real quick, but basically it boils down to um, complaints about businesses uh, could come in from or could come to a lot of different departments um, be it City Hall be it um, my office or uh, even the police department um, so any complaints about any business should actually funnel through the, the development services office so we could we could address these uh, complaints and um, we don't want uh, the complaining parties to be um, to be inconvenienced by the actions of, of businesses. So um, we could look at it, but especially need to look at these conditional use permit uh, businesses operating under a condi conditional use permit, and um, we would definitely need to. Uh, get more involved with those as far as uh, issuing warnings about not not to violate their conditions that they're operating under. And um, if need be, take this down the road to uh, uh, citations or even uh, suspensions of their, of their uh, conditional use permit if uh, necessary. I, I just have a question, Chris. How many conditional? You, the only one I know is is the vineyard. Who, do well, we the, have? Well, the, the, we have quite a few. Uh, the marijuana place, both of them, have conditional use permits on them. The vineyard is another one. Um, right off hand, those are the only three I can think of right now. But um, and it has has there been complaints? I know the smell was. Yeah, yes, sir, has. At the, there has been complaints on yes. the conditional use properties? And, um, yeah, Michelle has been uh, just really good about uh, dealing with the owners of the business with the complaints against it. But um, right, right here in uh, Open Council, I don't feel comfortable talking about those complaints because it's still kind of up in the air. Um, there's efforts being made to address those complaints by the business owner and hopefully those work and there there's the um, impact to the neighborhood is is um, no more but uh, anyway uh, any questions any other questions Michael I have a question there so Chris if I'm reading this right once a complaint is made, the business will be notified verbally? And in writing. Huh? And in writing. Once or twice? Well, twice. Well, there's twice before the, the, this section would come in, into play, and this is within a two-year a two period. Okay, so you get, you get two written notifications that you're in violation? That's correct. And then... On the third one, on the third one, violation, they'll be penalized for two years. What's the penalty? The penalties are, are spelt out within the uh, the ordinance itself, okay, but uh, it would be, um, I believe, a 30-day suspension of their conditional use permit, and then they have six six months to make any necessary repairs or modifications to where this is not an issue any longer. And if they can't meet that within that six six month period, then they um, a hearing would be held, 
and um, in front of council, and council would vote to um, withdraw their conditional use permit. Okay, so by withdrawing their conditional use permit, are we telling businesses that we're not business friendly or or what? I mean, well, no, the biggest thing is the biggest. Create, does it create the situation where we shut them down? The biggest thing is the condi conditional use permit is you're protecting the, the surrounding properties from the effects of that business operating at that location. So uh, I think the biggest message you would say is you're protecting the, the neighboring properties uh, against uh, whatever violations they are committing. So I live behind, I live behind Chalos. Okay. And every time they cook beans, you can smell them a mile away. <laughs> right. Okay. Now, I don't have a complaint about the smell of beans, but if somebody in the neighborhood has a complaint about the smell of beans, well, they're, do they're they not... have a conditional use permit? Would they be in violation? Well, it, it, if, if they were operating under a conditional use permit, and if their conditional use permit says you're not allowed to smell beans outside the building, then that, that would be a situation where, yeah, they would have to do whatever it would take to uh, stop the smell of beans. So, so if you're a business in this community, you're required to have a conditional use permit? No, oh, no. Oh, okay. No. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so why is, why is a business required to have a conditional use permit? Because the zoning code allows for certain businesses in certain zoning districts. And within, there's allowable uses. And then there's also, in the code, allowable uses with conditions placed upon that business. I, I have to read the ordinance because I'm not up on the ordinance, but I will um, do that. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, Councilman Pastor, um, uh, having the ability to do a CUP uh, uh, makes us more business friendly. If there is something where we think it's a positive thing and we think it'll work, it's not quite the, the right fit, that that business comes to us says we know we can make this work but but we know we have conflict with the with the neighborhoods we've had meetings with the neighborhoods to make sure that they're happy and they make promises they say if you let us build this where instead of us saying no we're saying let's work it out so we work it out they make promises and 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 it's going well but then they don't hold the promise they're not keeping up their end of the bargain uh, we, we 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 need to have a way that if, if we take a chance on a business because we're business friendly and, and they habitually cannot keep it together to, to commit that promise, whether they didn't know uh, what they were, whether it was an accidental or intentional, um, just get it there. If, if we have no way to, to remove that, um, we've been taken to the cleaners and we have no recourse and the neighbors and, and the people who are suffering from this because they made a promise. This is a tool and it's a, I think it'd be a very rare case. It goes to council, it's council's choice to remove and, and council's gonna think long and hard before they close the business. But, but if you're council and you have a bunch of people in a neighborhood saying you promised and you passed this and now do something about it because they're not upholding the commitments, this is that tool. Just because we have the tool doesn't mean that the council's gonna pull the trigger and do that, but, it, but a lot of times that tool gives us leverage to make sure that they, they know that there's consequences that they don't live up to the commitment they made when they came to council the first time. Mr. Mayor. And Mike, we only have two CUPs in the city, as, as Chris explained. Can you give an example just, just of, the, of the vineyards, maybe, what their CUP is? I'm sorry? What, what is the conditional use permit, permit for, the, for the vineyards, the wine? Oh, the conditions on that permit? I, I believe it was uh, the distance from other houses. It was the smell of the animals. They had the animals. So, petting zoo. Yeah. The petting zoo. Petting zoo. So that, that was their cup. That, that's really it. Point of information, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, if, so if I had, I was the conditional use permit. I had a business that I had a petting zoo or whatever have you. And if, so the way I read this ordinance is that within a 24 month period, if I have two complaints, I'll then have to go to the Board of Adjustments to determine whether or not that my CUP would be removed. Does that two complaints then come from the same reporting party or does the two complaints come from, say, 
to neighbors that then decided that they didn't want me there anymore and within three months came and said i have a complaint and it's the same complaint again i think at we, that point would then it's would it trigger saying okay now let's let's revoke their cup or would it be that you're you're saying we're going to look at it case by case or who's going to go out there and ensure that it's not just complaint after complaint from two three neighbors got together and said we no longer want that here well uh, I, I mean I, it, 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 I, I believe within um the guy the guidelines are it, it talks about investigation to verify the complaint well it just says to the planning the the zoning administrator satisfaction we have a zoning administrator that doesn't reside in this community so how will then the re zoning administrator know that that complaint is mitigated there would be there would be a um a vi says uh committing two violations of conditional use um and a violation would would be not just a complaint where, where people got together but we went investigated and and found that there is cause and and issued a citation that would be the the or the notice of violation uh, just as as you would by by looking at the evidence and, and bringing that forward and that notice of violation would have appeals process also so it, maybe they felt they were wrongly done there's a defense for a notice of violation there's a whole series board of adjustments different things that can happen with a notice of violation you'd have to have two successful notice of violations and then within that third year have a third one before my, any of this would kick in but my question would be as if you came to me found that i was violating something yes. and then i I'm trying to rectify are you in that in that time frame then another complaint came of the same same whatever and you then th at that point I would be in violation of this code because there would be two complaints against me it's not outlined that it has to be two different complaints or the same complaint it's two complaints well, I, and, and, and I, I'd be violated I'd be in violation of this code I mean if, if you have seven people complaining about the same ha ha um, instance uh, let's say that that you had a spill of of something that was um, uh, staining everything and and it was that that one instance that caused that spill that let that out and and people may be coming in different times and now it's leaked down to here or something like that what what was it that made that happen what let that spill happen you promised you're going to make this lotion but it wouldn't spill but it did and now it smells like perfume everywhere um, and and then you got that violation uh, took care of it and then time goes on and another spill that would be the that would be the second complaint so you you can't you can't stack it and i uh, on on just this the you know it'd be double jeopardy okay so we'll, we'll have somebody a member of staff going out there to ensure that this complaint is validated and or oh, oh yeah no if it'd it be, was a mishap or something broke at that point would they still be in violation because they're fixing it or I guess that no. that's where I and we we may have you know the warning system where you go out there and say hey you know people are talking about that before we go to get citation there's a process too um, and so it would be our normal process that we're using now it's just if it's habitual and you get three in, in two years okay mayor go ahead Freddie yeah um, so I you know I, I kind of agree with Jesse on on his thought process I have the same you know what what is the val the validation process um you know because you know we we do want to be business friendly but um if you have a neighborhood that uh out of the entire neighborhood you you may have uh, two or three neighbors that are just um not agreeable to to that business um and they're the same uh they're the same members of that community that or that or that neighborhood that continue to complain now I get, you know, there's a validation process. Yes, you did valid business. You did val you did violate, um, you know, section A of, of your conditional use permit. Uh, but more than that, if they're trying to correct it, um, how, what is the process in actually uh, let it, giving them the time to, to correct it uh, versus uh, giving them a citation? The um, in in Mr. Mayor, members, council, um, we can bring Dana, who would be on this uh, the the person responsible for the notice of violation. If you have questions for him on 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 the enforcement, we can bring. He's I think he's queued up. Is that pretty standard? Twenty four month. I mean, that seems like a long time. 
You know, if you're going to commit a violation and you get to them, why not a six month? Why not a year? Well, and and, and there's we could do this. We could do two, uh, a third one in one year. We could do five in two years. If if you think it's just a magnitude issue, of how many chances somebody has, we could we could make that adjustment. And I, I agree with that. I think so I think two in two years is an yeah. entirely too long of a time span. And, and I, I I think. Um, I mean, I, I would I would say a third one in in one year, or or go with um, three and two, or I, I don't. Uh, Chris, what do you what do you think it would be more effective? I mean, usually we have the rep repetition is happening in a series. What would be your recommendation? Well, with you know, it would depend. If you ask the neighboring property owner, they'd want it. They'd want the business shut down after the first offense. Um, but to be business friendly, we want to give them more of a chance. So if you want to move this to uh, two violations within one year, um, we could do that, or we can uh, make it three violations within it, a year. It's, it it's entirely up to council. Is it the same violation then? So they would have to be in violation of the same thing two times within a year, or it's completely separate violations that okay I fixed this but now this broke and now you, now I'm getting complaining about this and I mean, how so many chances it, somebody has we can, it, can we make that adjustment. Tina you need to shut off your YouTube feed there you go yeah and and Chris is 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 this a stacking is it have to be the the violation has to be the same violation correct it would be the third time the same violation that portion of the CUP uh, I do. The uh, the ordinance isn't clear on the on the same violation or different violations. And I, I think that's a fair thing to have the the same violation. So you know because you could have a, a lot of different things. And first it's widget number one, and then it's exit number two. So I think clarity wise, we could say it's got to be that that same portion of the CUP that you habitually are can't fix. It was a promise you made, and you can't keep that lotion tank from spilling out in the ground over and over again. So I, I think the, the modification would be uh, that we have the same violation and then um, possibly shorten, one year yeah. rather than, than shorten two. it. I mean, because yeah. in, in two years, something can break three times. Well, exactly. exactly. But, but, but in, in six months, if it breaks two times, then you, you know, there's but, a problem. But I, 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 I don't see, you know, a, a breakage. If somebody has a something in, and it broke down, you know, you get it fixed and, and it's not going to go to the thing. This is these types of violations. Dana, do you want to talk about, I mean, if you have, let's say you have a, a venting system that's supposed to keep smells down. It, I mean, a break is one thing, but just, but repetitive or, 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 okay, lotion tank where that, you, the valve keeps breaking and spilling lotion into the outside, the neighborhood smells of perfume. I mean, is, um, uh, there is a there's a portion where you would say, hey, you, you know, you're smelling up the place. You got to stop that leakage. What would be the progression as a zoning administrator in enforcing? And at what point would you get to the? We're going to do a citation and and find that. Can you address that? Yeah, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council members. It's a pleasure uh, to address this item. Uh, you know, we use our discretion and we document it and we look for that continued violation uh, usually you're given information from the violators and hey this is exactly the problem this is, you know and if that occurs again in a year some we talk about that again okay same problem what are you doing to fix this and you know we really use a uh, just a you know common sense intelligent way to approach these issues we don't want to close any businesses down uh, but we need to make sure that we can tell the neighbors that this you know we're doing everything we can to, to correct this violation or situation. We would just take that each time. Um, but just use common sense and document. And uh, if it continues, obviously at some point, you know, uh, maybe they're just incapable of managing a system uh, mm -hmm. that's that complex or something. And then that's when the citation would occur unless, you know, there's another issue going on or something we need to address through a citation. Um, but Mayor, Mayor. Another chance. and if I could just point out, uh, Mayor, the, so we essentially do this anyway with any use, uh, the conditional use permit is, is 
right now, the only remedy is if you violate your condi the conditions of your use permit, it goes back to council or PNZ or whoever issued it, and they discuss, are they going to revoke it or impose additional uh, uh, conditions? So this type of, this ordinance would actually give staff another uh, tool in our tool belt to work with conditional use people, uh, conditional use permits without going before uh, a hearing, public hearing in front of yourself or, or PNZ. So it actually gives us more uh, staff, more ability to work things out. Thank you. Charlene has a question. Chris, so tell me about this scenario. The, the vineyard has their conditional uses for the petting zoo for the animals. So they've met all the requirements and they've built the structures and so forth. Okay, so everything's fine and dandy for a year or two or maybe even 10. Then one of those big expensive houses up on the hill sells and the new owner says, I don't like those animals being there. I don't want to look at them. I don't want to hear them. I don't want anything to do with it. And they habitually complain. What, what, how is that addressed fairly to the vineyard? Well, if, if the vineyard is and their animals are, are still in compliance with their conditional use permit other than the neighboring house up above just doesn't like the fact that there's uh, animals down below that's not a condition of their permit so but it would have to be a noise donkeys make noise goats make noise you know what what in the agree the what from my understanding the surrounding property owners were all notified right and the majority said we have no issue but now what happens when it's a di it's a totally different group of people what if, what if three houses sell and now we have a majority that say we don't like hearing the goats comment to your question i think the realtor would have to disclose that information upon selling of that property so if someone that there's a it, conditional use permit they would have oh, to no. Yeah, that's a like a living next to a railroad track or something like that. You have to disclose. Have to make a, uh, disclose that information. I have believe I'm saying. Fernando, you had a question. Uh, I did. Um, the the thing that I was thinking is, you know, like there's a there's an immediate rush to maybe 24 months is too extreme, but at the same time, remember that the remedy at 24 months is to bring it to council. And so if there are extremating circumstances and there's something beyond their control, the power went down and therefore the venting system didn't work. I mean, what can they do about that? Right. I mean, so those are things that then we could look at and say, yeah, we understand why that happened this time. But, um, but if we just automatically go to the other side of the of the spectrum and and make it harder for there to be any corrective action, I think that we we take tools away from us and and remember that we always have that opportunity if we get to that point where we have another complaint at within the 24 months and you got three, then we can then look at the body of evidence and and determine whether or not that seems realistic. So I would. I would hesitate to start going the other way and making it easier for conditional use. There are people that know the rules, right? Look, 18 months, you get a ticket, falls off your record. What does everybody do? Oh, I'm only got one ticket. It fell off. I can speed. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? That's what I would worry about is that those people that would keep score that would then go, eh, we can mess up one time. We can mess up two times. We're okay. And I think the spirit of it is that they're trying to comply and abide by the requirements. Exactly, and, and, and I guess it's all about balancing it out for the business owner and for the for the uh, neighborhood also that that surrounds there. You know, this business could have invested a million dollars into the into the field business like we have up here with this marijuana place, over a million dollars investment. You know, yeah, we got to figure a way just to balance it out and make it fair to them. Fair, my. My uh, input would be, what would be the what what would be the difference between doing revoking the CUP or instituting a fine levied against them after the second one? So yeah. then they would know, okay, well, I don't want to do it. you you hit them in their pocket versus trying to just pull it down, 
pull it pull it away from them. So then, I mean, if I owned a business and I knew that I might be fined if this isn't kept up, I might be inclined to make sure that it's being kept up every time. The and, and a lot of times, I mean, it's the money that they want to invest into the property to make it right. You know, the 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 money coming to the city is not so important as the money to to fix the problem. Um, but but maybe Dana, have you seen a scenario? Where instead of a, a 30 day violation, it's a, a fine rather than than a removal of the CUP. Does in your in your world has have you seen that work better? Um, no, I've never actually seen a fine. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, we've prosecuted, and then it's up to the the prosecutor at that point, law I mean, enforcement, to a, for to a certain, point. depending on what it is, yeah. and not not a CUP necessarily though. The, the shutdown is, is costly, and so there's definitely it's a it's a financial when you're when you're shutting down a business, um, and and that would encourage them to hopefully spend the money to do the fix that that would work. I think, and I think Councilman Rios yeah, had a Freddie, question. you had a question. Yeah, so um, maybe this is geared more for Dana, but you know this is this is kind of where I'm at. I mean, I I I think we need some teeth in our in our uh, to back our our. Uh, conditional use permits uh, because you know not only are we going to be business friendly but we got to protect our, our neighbors and 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 the community the surrounding communities um, but where I'm stuck is um, if if a business is showing good faith that they're trying to take care of the and remedy the situation um, I I would hate to see us uh, pull the trigger and say well you know you're, you're not doing it timely enough um, and and where what what is that timeline? I, I just feel like if if they're showing effort, um, and a lot of times with CP, uh, CUPs, uh, effort is money out of their pocket uh, to correct and remedy the situation. Um, so I guess my question is, um, at at what point uh, or where in this in this system or process uh, do we say enough is enough? Now you know you're, we're going we're going to live we're going to levy the the heavier hand. Councilman Rios, Mayor, um, if I could. So, the, you know, I my style is to figure out what the problem is initially. Okay, we acknowledge there's a problem. Now, how long does it take to fix it or remedy it? Oh, 30 days. Okay, great. Let's talk again in 30 days. Go back at that point. It's still not fixed. We're still having an issue. What? Okay, what's been done? Where are you at? You told me it'd be 30 days. Here we are. What's Where are we at? What's going to take to remedy this? Oh, give me 15 more days. Okay, 15 more days or whatever the nuances are. Okay, great. But I, I prefer it being their words um, and then give them the opportunity to uh, to remedy it and, and live up to their word. Um, you know, then, then at that point, usually third time's a strike. You know, you got to say, okay, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me more than that and shame on me. So right. that's my personal approach. Like I said, Last thing we want to do is shut anybody down, but we have to balance that. We've got angry neighbors and something's not getting taken care of. And what we're being told isn't what's being done. So now we know we've got a problem and that's, you know, um, where we would take it up a notch and, and then do a citation and make them ask them to go speak to the judge. That'd be a civil violation in the zone in a violation of the zoning code. Like I said, it, I, I'd be it doesn't happen often, that's for sure, in my world. All right. And I guess a follow up on uh, maybe just some of your experience, uh, you know, if, if, and I think I think we have some factual uh, experience in, in Globe, but, uh, you know, before business season even went up, there was already pushback. So it's, it's kind of uh, really difficult to um, defend that, uh, you know, that we as a council decided okay, we're going to move forward with this. Um, obviously, we you know, I don't think we have the authority to tell what business they can and can't do, uh, as long as they they uh, conduct business within guidelines and and regulations. Uh, but that's a tough one when when you already have a a pushback uh, before the business even starts. It, to that exact point, uh, Councilman. Um, we have the codes we know exactly you know for the most part council's intent 
from the planning commission's intent uh, because of the process. Uh, they're allowed to do this by right, and that's we've got to you know have an even playing field for everybody. Right. And treat them the same regardless. That's why we have that whole public process, and you know the the. Uh, their opportunity to uh, interject their opinions and everything at the public's opportunity is through that hearing process to issue the CUP. Once that's issued, now we have those conditions that we need to ensure and the codes and other codes, um, all the zone, all the city and zoning codes to enforce um, equally. But that's why you have that hearing process up front. Thank you. So is council comfortable with the ordinance of 865 or does it need to be modified? It's, uh, I guess that's a question at this point with the discussion we've had. I see the modification of the two of the same. Yes. The, the, I'm good with that, it, Mayor. That it's uh, the um, uh, three of the same same violation. It's not one time it's lotion, another time it's a, um, a, you know, a visual, and the third time it's something totally different. Yeah. It's three, three repetitive Correct. of the same I, I violation. Like the 20. I'd yeah, like the 24 months to be one decreased. 12 month yes. period. Right. Right. Mm. 12 month. Yeah, 12 I'd go along with 12, not 24. And, and the other thing is that we have to do a good job of identifying through the CUP process that we do have this habitual ordinance. And so don't promise something that you can't make it happen. Right. Yep. That's a true statement. So, Mr. Mayor, if there's no other questions or comments, I move that we approve the planning and zoning's recommendation to approve ordinance number 865 amending city code chapter 14 section 14-9-6 by adding section 14-9-6f with the recommendations from council second. Second. second we have motion a second for approval of uh, ordinance 865 and you have all those uh, the three uh, recommendations from council then i guess on there paul yeah you have Pardon. the recommendations from to for the changes before we yes uh, the I was just writing these down so we'll um, with a this it must be the same same violation and a 12 month period uh, third violation within a 12 month period rather than the 24 and the same violation correct okay now he said as written that's no. not as written so he's so modifying he it as to written, 12 I months said with stipulations with this he said with stipulations okay I don't agree that but okay go ahead and and are we changing that to 12 months and not 24 yeah okay yeah 12 months <coughs> okay we vote on it? yeah we'll call for the vote all those in favor say aye aye any opposed nay any abstain? opposed motion passed one opposition. thank you mayor and council one opposition to get that i think those are great additions to the ordinance item c consideration to fund contract cs-2019 0013 to Point Companies Incorporated for the Holgate Lift Station Electrical Upgrades Project in the amount not to exceed $60,719.60 to be funded from account number 51-80-53000 Wastewater Contingency Fund. Jerry. Mr. Mayor, members of council, we got a couple of easy ones. Good. <laughs> <laughs> So um, these, this is a contract that you approved last <coughs> fiscal year, and uh, it didn't get completed because of material back orders. And so it recently has gotten completed. In fact, we had the walkthrough today on it. And, and so uh, for some reason they weren't paid. But we returned the funds from the fiscal, last fiscal year to the fund balance and the wastewater. And now we're asking through the uh, wastewater contingency to pull those funds back out of the fund balance and pay the, pay the contractor off. And you're going to find the same thing for the next item, too. So um, the original contract was 82390 or $379. And uh, we paid uh, off some of it, and this is the remainder. So th th this uh, this amount showed a, that additional amount in our fund balance. Yes. But now that we're going to take it out of our yes. contingency, basically for the years. I mean, we, we, we could have just moved it forward, but but it's just just the it's apples and apples here. Just move it into the fund balance and move it back out. And uh, this this way, uh, it takes a council vote to to show you what's going on too. Question, Mr. Mayor. Um, Go ahead, Freddie. If I may, thank you. Um, you know, we've, we've, as a council, we've already approved this. Uh, the monies have been secured. 
um, staff has uh, been able to um, um, purse it and then bring it back out when we need it and this is the time we need it. Uh, so I would like to make a motion if there's no other conversation. Go ahead. Uh, I make a motion to fund contract CS 2019-0013 to point companies uh, incorporated for the Holgate Lift Station electrical upgrade project in the amount not to exceed sixty thousand seven hundred nineteen and sixty cents to be funded from account five one eight zero five three zero 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 wastewater contingency fund. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval of the contract. Uh, with point companies any further discussion all those in favor say aye. aye aye any opposed nay any abstaining motion pass thank you item d consideration to fund contract cs-2020-0018 with llr electric company for the scum pump electrical improvements and equipment in the amount not to exceed eighteen thousand nine hundred and seventy nine dollars from account number 51-80-53000 wastewater contingency fund. Jared. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, very same thing. We had a contract last year with uh, LLR to uh, uh, put in a scum flotation electrical and um, had to back order the electrical parts on it. They didn't come through, now they're complete. Uh, the entire uh, contract was $18,979. And so we're asking now to pull it back out of the fund balance through the contingency and uh, pay the contractor. Um, I motion to do that as stated. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval of contract with LLR Electrical Incorporated. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstaining? Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. That was easy. The third, the third one uh, isn't quite as oh, easy. Well, you're on three. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion and possible approval. I, 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 war I warmed you up with the first two. Oh, okay. <laughs> Discussion and, and possible approval to obligate $48,146 to Arizona Eastern Railroad to cover the cost of design, preparation, and processing of a construction and maintenance agreement for the new railroad crossing at the new location of the Upper Pinal Creek Bridge. Funds will be taken from the account number 21-80-52201 CIP Pinal Creek Bridge. So, so um, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I guess the easy part of this one is it's out of the funds that we got from the state legislature. So uh, th that part's easy. Uh, the tough part for me is uh, is paying upfront money for this, and but we don't have a choice. That basically amounts to we uh, we're working with Arizona Eastern. Uh, they require that they do the design as well as the construction, and uh, and we pay the tab. So uh, this is this is a uh, I, I put the invoice in front of you. This is a partial invoice. This is. Uh, one of the, well, this is actually the second partial because they've already paid five thousand dollars, and um, and uh, probably uh, we'll probably get many before this is over. And so I I have a rough estimate. Um, uh, Paul wanted me to mention was uh, about five hundred thousand dollars for the crossing. So um, that's what they estimated, not me. Jerry, did do we? Do we anticipate this and and put this in our in in the estimated amount that that you had when we went to the state? So when we went to the state, we uh, were partnering with the local entities, um, and since then we've uh, uh, been dealing with the corporate people, and they're not as partnering. So um, we are getting the we are getting the bills for everything. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members, Council, Jerry. The but we we did incorporate significant funds. We knew this this crossing costs would be built in. So it, uh, I think you had put a number. Uh, what was your initial number? About four hundred thousand, or yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's, it's a little bit over. So so the money's there. It just uh, uh, as Paul can tell you, it's it's 
it's uncomfortable for me turning loose of that kind of money. Mr. Mayor, members of council, Jerry is, is physically hurting when he has to, to pay more than, than he wants to on this stuff. But that so, won't put us over budget, though, what, what we have with that. In that I account. do not believe it will put it over budget because I, I might have anticipated this. So it's like right. like Scotty on the Enterprise. I mean, our hands well, we are tied. Do it, yeah. what, what, what is it we can do? We, we have to do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so um, there – well, we didn't anticipate, quite honestly, and and with all uh, with all kidding aside, what we didn't anticipate was the corporate office requiring that we hire somebody to manage the railroad side of this, and and um, and by saying that that we had we were going to hire our own people to design the railroad crossing, they did not want that, so they hired their own people. Will it be more expensive? We don't know that. Uh, it might be the very same amount of money. It's just that uh, it's not how, uh, uh, when we put the numbers together, we anticipated this. So uh, we we hope that it's within budget, and we're going to work with them closely to make sure that we can minimize that as as much as we possibly can. We don't anticipate in overspending the 2.81 million. So, uh, but we did anticipate in having some left over. Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, you know, the, we have initiated this moving the crossing. The railroad was totally happy with the crossing, at least how it impacted them. Uh, so it makes sense that, that, that they feel they don't need to come out of pocket and they want to make sure that they're going to own this crossing and, and have to live with this, that, that their people are in charge of it and watch out. Uh, I, can, I can see their point of view. Uh, I think you can't fault them for it other than... Um, you know, it, it's it's how they make sure that their infrastructure is, is solid and secure and investment. Um, and so they're still great partners with us uh, locally. They're, you know, they do wonderful things uh, in, in this respect. Um, we want to, um, they're, we're asking them to to allow us to do this and, and, and we have to make sure that they're kept whole. And, and I th think you see um, the benefit of this in other areas too, i.e. the the um the crossing that that was worked on today i mean uh we had been talking to them a long time and now that we're working together that seemed to um to, to come to fruition but uh, uh you know i i think that we're see we're seeing uh, benefits in other ways as well so yeah yeah jerry that's a comment i wanted to make is a, is a we got to separate that relationship that we have locally with the Arizona Eastern a different to, different total group corporations doesn't even know where Globe Arizona probably yep, is but exactly the relationship we built here you know we're benefiting from some of this work that we're doing because they're paying for the barricading they're paying for the lift I mean there's a lot of things that we're benefit betting benefiting with this uh, project that we're doing on North Broad Street North and, Broad entrance and I don't think the local um, uh, uh, managers that, that we dealt with uh, anticipated this either because uh, you know they were on our hiring panel and and all this so uh, um, you know it is what it is we, we got to move forward with it and like Paul said it's uh, the money's there it's I, we think we should be okay um, but um, I hate bringing an item to council that I'm not 100% fond of so uh, you know, but I, I don't think we have a choice on this be real honest I'm sure you got more tricks in your hat anyway. Maybe. So, Mayor? So we did get the dot lights, Mayor. Any other questions or comments for Jerry? I do, Mayor. Go ahead, Freddie. Um, so, Jerry, uh, uh, you kind of flew by a number. Did you say 500000 uh, uh what your anticipation was? Uh, the estimate from Arizona Eastern is $589,000. Okay, and, and that, that's the all-in cost that would be design and construct? That is totally an estimate. They won't have a real number until after the design is done, and they won't move forward with the design until after we send them a check for, for $48,000. <laughs> okay, so, but my question is, that at least for now, the anticipation is, is that much for, for design and construction? Yes. Okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure that I understood that. Um, yes. so, and it's unfortunate that we're not given the opportunity to uh, have our own design. Uh, of course, that, they, they would stamp it anyway as approved, but uh, since we don't have that option, um, you know, like uh, like Councilwoman Giles said, you know, we're, we're in a position where uh, uh, we have to take 
what is being handed to us and and try and just work through through their process uh, in a uh, business like manner and, and hopefully it doesn't uh, it'll soften the the burden on on our pocket and, and, and councilman Rios I, I look at it from a di bigger picture that helps me a little bit is it's five hundred thousand um, but the state legislature grant granted is almost three million so um, you know this this is towards a, a project that's going to make our community safer and uh, our transportation infrastructure uh, better so uh, I say we well, and, and I think I think we knew all along this this was going to be required within the project so right. and, um, and Paul teases me about it but he knows I understand yeah. Yeah. Uh, mr. mayor members council kudos for Jerry I, I gave him 15 minutes to come up with a price when we were when I was in the parking lot talking to Frank Pratt he's like give me a number and I'm like Jerry give me a number and so Jerry did good on coming up with it with a number it went 3.2 yeah well I would have now if I'd known this <laughs> Should have but I you know I built a pretty good contingency in that 2.81 well I, I move that we accept this as presented second second we have a motion a second for approval of Obligating $48,148 to Arizona Eastern Railroad. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstaining? Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. So we go to item F and it's consideration, consideration of resolution 1817, a resolution to abandon a portion of city of right of way located at 300 block of 7th Street. Shelley, can you read resolution 1817, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Resolution number 1817, a resolution of the Mayor and Council of the City of Globe, County of Gila, State of Arizona, abandoning a portion of right of way generally located on the 300 block of South 7th Street. Is Council pleased with that reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Mayor. Oh, go ahead. Yes. I move to table this and move it to e-session to get advice from legal. Second. Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. okay. We have a motion and second for that? Yeah. yeah. We have a motion and second to um, table resolution 1817. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstaining? Motion passed. We'll go back to item F, uh, which is Arizona Register of Contractors. Mr. Mayor, do you want to do um, G and then we can go to F? We okay, G and then we want to just wrap okay. that up because I have LaCoya kind of hanging out. Just okay, in case. let's go to G and it's consideration of and consideration of and possible approval of professional service contract number PS-2020-0036 with revolutionary HR consulting in the amount not to exceed $90,000 to be funded out of the account number 10-55-53000 admin contingency mr mayor members of council um and uh, we we've talked about this uh, two weeks ago um this would be the the two phases phase one we we do the survey with the um to discover um uh, exactly the uh, where our staff is at that that satisfaction survey um, and then put the training together based on that survey and 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 do this to help get a, a, a handle on on um, your request to me to come back and say let's have a plan let's put processes in place let's put a a way to, to move this forward to, to better our our, um, our staff and benefit them that's phase one um, we also have the the independent uh, third-party um, uh, advocate or, or, or person that, that everyone can talk to uh, that we, we feel is that fourth leg of the of the stool the um, employee relations portion of that uh, and, and that amount is at at sixty thousand dollars annually uh, 15 a quarter um, as we had talked and then um, what this would do would uh, it we we have it, it the the hard number is 81,000. We've taken it up to 90,000, not to exceed 90,000. So we have some capacity because we still have uh, the ability for La Coya, um, uh, to come in and, and take on special projects, deal with uh, certain issues. Just having her kind of an on-call uh, HR consultant to help us with uh, you know, the things that the council believes they need help with. And so that's where the additional 9,000 came in. 
Um, that's a very high level overview. Um, if you have specific questions, if I can answer, or if you'd like me to get um, uh, LaCoya uh, to appear or, or call in, we can, we can do that depending on council's preference. Any questions, comments at this point? Is LaCoya going to be on? No. Um, no, let me, I can, if, yeah. Well, I, I have some questions about the contract, so I guess okay. yeah, I'll let me ask her to be on. Jump. So I haven't, maybe we can address this one without, while we're waiting, because I don't really think we, we probably don't need her for this one, but I, I think this employee survey, this is really a biggie, and it's really important for our, for the employees, but I think the, when we discussed this previously, the deal was that the questions were going to be formulated and then run by council. And I don't see that in this document. And Mr. Mayor, members of council, the, um, uh, the, the, the questions are, um, are, are in a stage. Uh, it, I, I believe that um, I would defer to LaCoya whether um, uh, it, I would ask, if, if you were asking me, I would ask her, you know, does, where does she, she fall on that? Because again, if you're going to hire an expert, you might want, you want to talk to them. So before I say, yes, we can do that, I'd like to check with her. But um, I, I don't, personally, I don't see a problem. She was the one that was going to formulate her yeah, ideas anyway. She, she's a, she has a final say but on them. In a previous meeting or in a previous discussion, and I can't place my finger right on it, but there we did discuss that. We did. Yeah, and the it, council said we'd like to see the questions I, before it goes out to the. Yeah, I don't. I don't see. I don't see a, a, a problem with that. Yeah. So I'm going to ditch the um, the texting and try dialing her up. Hi, can you hear me? Oh, oh there, there she is. <laughs> so, LaCoya, can you, uh, we can hear you. We can't, there you are. Hi. Thank you. Um, uh, we just had a, a, a we, we're at your contract and there are some contractual questions and um, uh, Councilwoman Giles had a, had a question about the survey. She's very supportive of the survey. Um, and I can't remember the conversation uh, whether we would preview the questions going on the survey to council oh. prior to distribute I'm, I'm sorry, Paul, hold on just a second. Okay. I'm sorry, council members. I'm, I'm facilitating a class right now and somebody's asking a question. I'm so sorry. Hang on just a second. Okay. She did say yes last time when we were taking the word quiz. Okay, thank you, Denise. Um, Sorry, what was the question? What was the question? Oh, I, I, I said, can I use a pen and paper to write down what questions I want to come back to you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You. Okay, you're welcome. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Uh, you said it was about the survey. Yes. Yeah, uh, do we have, um, uh, there's any reason uh, council's asking if they can preview the questions before they go out? Oh, so sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, yeah, there's no no prohibition on that, certainly. Okay. So there, mm -hmm. that's good. And then I think um, Councilman Pastor has some questions. Yeah. Look, okay. uh, you mentioned in your uh, discussion on the employee survey that responses will be anonymous, though can be broken down by geographic location or other relevant demographics as desired by the city. Mm -hmm. will, will this give the employee hesitancy to answer the question knowing that their department will be identified as the respondent to that question does that create that uh, uncertainty I, I don't think it creates it um, I think that with every employee survey um, you have employees that are going to have some trepidation um, about uh, participating no matter how much um, uh, security is around uh, safeguarding their their identity or, or no matter how much the commitment is made to anonymity you still will have employees that are fearful of that now could knowledge of the uh, department being identified exacerbate that sure um, but what we do is we will combine departments that have less than a certain number of staff so I think it's less than six five or six staff we combine them so that it's not so that you, you can't really, um, and not that I'm in, implying anyone would, but so you can't kind of figure out who said what. Um, so we do do that as a measure just to make sure, again, that you can't, you know, figure out who said what. Um, but generally speaking, that in my experience has not been, uh, the, the ability to identify a department has not, 
created uh, a, a fear or reluctance to take the survey, but certainly it could, like I said, uh, feed into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then we, uh, you mentioned that uh, there'll be some com comprehensive training for all city of GLOBE employees on topics of communication, conflict resolution, and filing complaints of grievances. Uh, all city employees being salary, uh, uh, hourly, what other kind of employees? Uh, Part-time, full-time. Part-time, full-time. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it would be uh, most effective for all employees to uh, be operating off the same set of information. So level set um, expectations around all of those those elements. Um, so yeah, that absolutely would apply to all employees. Okay. Well, that that is, that is council as well. We're employees. Well, that that was my next question. Okay. Is there going to be any training for the council members? I mean. Uh, maybe under the a la carte section of the contract uh, where you would do a presentation. You've got a different uh, schedule for training and, and everything, and that can be worked out. But like uh, maybe a, a session with the city council in whole as to responsibilities, do's and don'ts, uh, mm -hmm. maybe open meeting law, uh, just a whole oh, gamut of absolutely. stuff gamut yeah. of, of rules and regulations that, that govern how we operate as a council. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, absolutely. We can absolutely do that. We'd be happy to do that. I just actually spoke to the mayor the other day about um, doing some training for the council. Um, and and that that is uh, the, the contract, or excuse me, the proposal is, is written broadly, purposely that way, so that if you do decide there's other things you'd like to add on later, that you certainly, you know, at least in 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 how it was written you can do that okay um, then on uh, on uh, page four of the contract you mentioned uh, you talk about uh, uh, reports uh, present uh, for presentation to the council so mm -hmm. you'll be doing executive summary reports to us during the process or at the end of, of the process uh, regarding the survey yeah, reg well, regarding the whole process that you'll be doing, the, the training, everything you're going to be doing for us. Oh, in the, in the whole scope of things, yes. I would suggest doing some milestone meetings or updates, uh, even within certain projects. So the employee survey, for example, there are some, some communication dates um, that have been laid out um, within the uh, leading up to the survey launch. Uh, uh, during and uh, um, at the close of it. And so we could align updates to the council to um, let you know, uh, you know, what the percentage, the completion percentages, the participation rates, you know, things like that. Um, so yeah, we could absolutely build in, I, I would suggest we do that certainly for the survey. And then um, however the, the council and, and Paul would like to see that information presented, we can build in updates um, however you would like. And beyond the survey, like I said, certainly with regards to each one of the projects as they get going or as we're planning for them to, to be implemented. Okay. And then, then in the proposal, uh, it, it's a, I don't remember where it's at, but you mentioned that you and your staff will be the HR contact during the first year of the contract, I believe, for the employees. Yeah, so they uh, assuming that yeah, assuming that we go that long, um, which we're happy to do. Um, but our our interest, as I I know, as I've discussed with Paul, is to really um, get the while we're uh, handling the employee relations to also help the city get. To a place where you can manage that on your own going forward so that you're not reliant on on our firm or any consulting firm um, to handle those issues there locally for you okay so this isn't a one-year contract then oh it, it is but i'm just saying it, okay. if we can get you to where you need to be sooner than that great okay uh, right. mr mayor members of council yeah i see this as a, a transition through our culture and and uh at the end of that once we have this this we, we 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 come out the other end of this with a culture that's been um, realigned, and then we can take that back over. And so what I what I don't see is this is an ongoing, you know, one, uh, two, three, five, ten year uh, situation, just as needed as council prefers. Okay. 
Um, there. I think that's Go ahead, it. Fernando. Yeah, that's um, all I have. So when I was a corporate employee for State Farm, uh, State Farm would do an employee survey, and it was completely confidential. Um, and we do it about every three years. And so that was just an organizational thing that they would do. Um, but I know that there was a way that they would actually, each questionnaire had its own like identity number and they knew what department that came from. So if there was a immediate supervisor problem or a middle supervisor or whatever, they could without the organization or the management knowing, they would be able to identify whether there was 30 complaints about the immediate supervisor in this department. Is that something that you can do as well? Yeah. Yeah, well, absolutely. That'd be part of the demographic breakdown. Mm -hmm. And it's for that exact purpose, to find out if you've got issues that are occurring or presenting within a particular area uh, or department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so absolutely. Any other questions, comments? No, uh, I think Freddie's uh, trying to speak. You're muted, Freddie. Freddie you're muted. <laughs> Man, I did so good the rest the whole meeting until now. <laughs> um, I do have a question, uh, Lacoya. I mean, uh, for uh, obviously, you know, we 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 want to get a, a good feel for where where our staff is and and the city and the culture. Uh, but uh, what is your recommendation for? you know, anonymity uh, of your questionnaires and, you know, who should know, who shouldn't know what is being, what is going to be uh, distributed. Um, does that have uh, potentially a, a, an effect of your results? Mm, you mean in terms of seeing the questions in advance? Uh, questions or, or, yeah, I mean, questions or, or any other, the rest of the process as we move forward. Uh, I, I don't I don't think so uh, only because the, the questions it's not um, you know it's not like an exam where knowing the questions up front are necessarily going to influence the response mm. um, you know if anything it would just be you know it's the first survey um, we recognize that culturally it may not be embraced because it's new and maybe other factors. So we, we that's why we build a strategy with any client and with Globe in particular. We have a campaign strategy to try to increase engagement from employees, increase the trust level in the process. So um, I, I don't see having um, a broader group, for example, review the, the questions as, as, as problematic or um, making employees fear that they that their responses won't be anonymous, providing we implement all of these uh, these aspects of, of employee engagement and readiness to, to increase their trust level and increase the likelihood that they will complete the survey or, or participate in the survey. Now, absent that work, then yeah, uh, any little thing that you do that could be perfectly innocuous could be received. In a, in a suspicious way or viewed suspiciously, um, including an employee could find out, oh, well, my manager knew what, what, what questions were going to be asked. See, I don't trust that survey. I don't trust that process. How did they know? And even though that's not uh, accurate, the, the, the lens that people would be looking through could color it, could influence it in a negative way. So I, I, so I can't uh, emphasize enough to, to the importance of doing that, that readiness work. Um, to, to manage the, the and, and, and uh, to manage employee participation and increase uh, the likelihood for participation. Okay, um, I, I have a follow up. Um, so through this kind of process, uh, uh, do you find a separation of of uh, city manager and council um, in certain aspects of the process where? Um, uh, either either one of them is is um, I don't want to say there's the lead, but um, as more informed than the other uh, because of the process and how you can navigate through HR through the chain of command and those kinds of things. Um, if I understand the question correctly, I'm just going to repeat it, make sure I understand. Um, you're asking whether uh, it's more um, impactful for. Uh, 
say the council to be involved or the city manager? I'm sorry, I'm not sure if yeah, I'm tracking. Yeah, your and I, maybe I should have been a little more clear, but yeah, I'm, I'm going along those that path. You know, at, okay. uh, where in your process is is your direct communication through through city staff, manager, and and uh, you know his uh, his team um, uh, versus right. versus you know what what is the council's uh, responsibilities in this process? I see. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, it's really up to you how you want that to flow. Generally speaking, what we would do is work with the city manager or the CEO to to be to be that point of contact in terms of administering the survey, all of the logistics. You know, because we're going to need a list of email addresses. We're going to need you know other logistical things. So that we would work together on that. Uh, and then when the survey is, and to get communications out and and give updates along the way and then typically when the survey closes then we would do a presentation of results um, to the city council so the or the executive board so the city manager would be the first to get that information generally and then we would present that uh, typically jointly to the council um, like I said it, it's customizable however the the whatever pleases the council uh, and and uh, Paul uh, we certainly can accommodate and, okay thank you and mr. You're welcome. members of the council I, I think what what LaCoy and I have talked through is a, a, a scenario where we have a two-week um, process where we, we, we um, market this we roll it out everybody knows it's coming uh, then there's a two after that there's a two-week window where everyone has a chance to, to fill this out um, they they'll be definitely be given be given time at work to fill it out um, if they have a computer they can they can do it there uh, we'll have kiosks available um, but it may be that that people want to you know would feel more comfortable doing it after hours or from home or some other uh, we encourage it it's not mandatory um, but we're highly encouraged we'll also have a, a, tr a training session with managers so the managers understand the importance of this and so so when a, a line staff says oh what's this about the managers on board and gets the the, the program also um, I, I think we want to uh, encourage this as a you know satisfaction survey um, that that council wants to hear this is this is not this is council wants to know how you feel about your employment with with um, the city of globe and this is your chance to 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 talk to to everyone to put it online and, and to say the good bad and 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 whatever on there um, so it, it, it by being electronic rather than paper there's no chance that you can you know it's it goes into a database and then it comes out parse 24 percent of, of the people uh, answered this response on this question uh, it is it's not so much a, a granular you know person by person LaCoya is that a, a good reflection of, of our discussion it is indeed yeah and I would add to that in the in the kickoff that that we were talking about um, that we were talking about doing a video message um, with the mayor and with the city manager um, to do the kickoff so that it will or it could be whatever you guys decide it could just be the mayor that does it and then we piggyback on with with the uh, Paul but it, it, the involvement at that level is really important I think to convey to employees to say at the highest levels of this organization we want to hear from you we want to hear about your experience um, your, your voice heard around the globe, you know, is, is, is the tagline, the kind of campaign tagline, you know, that we'll, we'll make, a, that we'll play off of throughout it. Um, and so, yeah, so having that, that the mayor as a, as a representative, um, that just kind of validates, if you will, or underscores, um, what, what the city is asking for, which is employees to, to speak up and be heard and have an opinion, uh, about what's working and what's not. So absolutely having that involvement, that partnering in that way is, is really essential. Um, and so, yes, uh, everything that Paul said, and then I just wanted to add on that piece. Charlene has a question for you. Hi, okay. my, my question is if, if so if I'm, I'm trying to think about in the, in the employee's eyes and I'm thinking to myself, well, gosh, if, I'm, if they have my email and I respond with my email address, there's not an anonymity then. How, how, how do we make them understand that, that there is? Sure, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, actually, um, so they, they'll get the, the survey link, but they won't have to respond via their email. They'll just complete the survey and click submit. 
they don't have to plug anything in in terms of their email. They, of course, don't have to put their names in. So it's not actually like a reply button that they have to click. It's just a submit when they're done. So that's one piece of it. The other piece is we could look at doing some FAQs. Um, you know, for, for employees uh, uh, in advance of the, the survey launch. So if they have specific questions around, well, if you have my email address, aren't you going to know it's me? Or if I, you know, if you know it's my department, aren't you going to know it's me? We could have those frequently asked questions uh, available uh, as part of the strategy to help increase the likelihood that they participate. Yeah, thank you. I, I like that. I think that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. I, yeah. I think there's some that just aren't going to understand that it, it really is, will be anonymous. Yes. Yeah, if you have an online survey, and yes. Submit, that's and I'm sorry, Council, I'm going to put you on hold just for one brief okay. second so I can just dismiss this but class real quick. You, I have okay. never in my life done an online survey because that's just not what I do. I'm not, I don't, I hate this online stuff. It's nothing I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And so I can't be the only soul in the world that thinks that way. Or, or maybe I am. Who well, the heck and, knows? And, and on the contrary side, we, Mr. Mayor, Members Council, Councilman Giles, the people like, well, if I do it by hand, they'll identify my hand marks or my scribble or something like that. I mean, I mean there's only, the, these are best practices. There's, there's only so much we can go to assure them that, that it's nothing. Um, you know, uh, negative, and, and Jesse, That's I cut you off. Uh, Paul, will this come back to council? Will we discuss this at a later later time about this um, evaluation and, I mean, not evaluation, or survey, if you will, and because as I'm reading this, we're here to discuss the the contract with her and I think we're getting a little too in the weeds, and yes. I'm hoping that maybe we will bring that part of it back. Well, and, and, and I, I think and maybe touch on right. And uh, oh, I see where we're going. No, I I think that what will in two weeks we hope to announce the that the survey when the the marketing of the survey, and I think that would be a time to have a, a, a better discussion earlier, get the reassurances, have the FAQ. I think that's a wonderful idea. Uh, and, and encourage people to, to participate. Um, you know, there's uh, this. This really is, uh, and, and I would I would say if it's if it's a mayor uh, promoting this, if it's mayor and council, uh, I think it'd be better if, if I stand back because this is an initiative from the council to find out about the satisfaction of your, of your employees. And so I would say either a message from the mayor or a message from the mayor and the body uh, to promote this. And, and we, we roll that out in two weeks. And then we can have a, a longer discussion about some of these nuances now that we kind of have a feel. This is the first chance I think we've had to, to have a, 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 a good solid meeting about, about this portion of it. Sure, but I'm, I'm asking if you could come back with a presentation to council so we can actually delve into it and have more time um, in, in talking about time and seeing Yep. You know what, yeah, what's thank on the you for bringing that up because yeah. I think we're here for an emotion to approve a contract yeah, yeah, yeah not really yeah. delve into the details yeah and that's we're just one that's just one aspect of, well, of her what she brings to the city so and I think that's imperative that we we do approve this contract it's much needed within the city and I think that this council has has seen that and as staff has seen that as well so, um yeah so so request from council we'll, we'll follow up in two weeks when we roll this out and have a, a more wide a more appropriate conversation about the the survey and the benefits so mr mayor if there's no more questions or comments i move to approve the professional service contract number ps 2020-0036 with revolutionary hr consulting in an amount not to exceed not to exceed ninety thousand to be funded out of account number 10-55-53000 admin contingency. Second. Motion to second for approval of contract with uh, professional services, uh, HR consulting. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstaining? Motion passed. Thank you, LaCoya. Um, now we need go to, back to presentation. bring back yeah and and just uh just my comment out of respect for time and a three and a half hour meeting and still executive session is uh register of contractors is it a long presentation or is that something we can move forward to another meeting and i i guess i have to address it to that fernando because yeah. you're the one that wanted brought forward but uh <laughs> Like I said, I'm, I'm just I'm just yeah. putting it out there. Look at the paper he's got. He's waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after I saw this book here, I go. Yeah. I read. 
I, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, I w I'd be happy to, to, to skip the e-session on the, the abandonment. I, I think we, that one's not pressing. This, uh, between, uh, we definitely can, can wait on the e-session on the abandonment. I would, I would think, because well, it's going to. Five seconds, if that. But what's? I think it's five seconds of that, but that's not the long part of it. Yeah, that's yeah. not the long part okay. of it. What I'm saying yeah. is, our uh, <laughs> register of contracts is that a long presentation, and out of respect, we still have a, a resident here that has been here for three and a half hours yeah. that we haven't uh, gotten to yet. Oh my. So, so if well, it's okay, point, I'm, we, I'm okay with. Okay, you can drop off. We did vote for your contract, and so you're you're good to go. We moved. Thank to you, the LaCoya. next agenda item. So, LaCoya, thank oh. you so much. While you were busy okay. dismissing your class. Okay, you thank LaCoya. you. And, and okay. we'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Okay, thank sounds you. good. Good night. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, to answer your question, this could be along with discussion. This could be a long presentation. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm okay with moving it forward. I spent about two and a half hours reading 150 pages and basically two pages pertain to where my questions are at and i think there's more to this code than what was handed to me so i probably would like to see the entire code because it it basically everything that i read is how to manage contractors and there's like two paragraphs that apply to a resident or a owner who would be trying to do work and so i'm not sure this is the part of the Unless this is the complete thing, I'm not sure that's exactly what I was looking for. A so I would say let's move it forward and do it some other time. Is that a motion? Is that a motion, Fernando? Yeah, I move. I motion to table this into a future date. Great. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to go through this packet too. Yeah. I, it's quite a extensive packet before we discuss it too. Okay. Second. We have a motion a second to table um, presentation on the Arizona Register of Contracts and move it forward. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion passed. So that'll move us forward to um, late agenda items, and we have one. We have discussion and possible approval of a request by by O. Dar Darling Jonovich, a.k.a. DJ's Casa LLC, for a tolling agreement with the City of Globe to stay to stay the appeal proceedings to the Board of Adjustments and to toll and extend to statute of limitations. Dana. Um, Mr. Mayor, Members of Council, um, Dana, if you want to start, and Bill, I see you up there. Let's do a sound check. How are you doing, Bill? I'm just checking on. I do have a call card on this one. Bill, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah, the, very, barely. Uh, we're going to get your sound up here. There, test one, two. One. Oh, there you go. There you go. And so, um, Bill, I know that, that you want to comment on this, too. We'll start with Dana, and then you can uh, break in uh, when you feel necessary on the and, or for questions. But, Dana, do you want to get council up to speed? Thank you very much, Mayor. Council members, we spoke at your last E session um, uh, two weeks ago and mentioned that uh, we were hopeful to have an application in uh, for a rezoning request. Uh, and as part of that was uh, this tolling agreement that has been provided by uh, Mr. Arlene's attorney and reviewed and, and, and discussed with uh, uh, Mr. Bill Farrell, or I'm sorry, Mr. Bill Sims. Thank you. Um, so with that, uh, basically the tolling agreement is a mechanism for Mr. Uh, uh, Janovich to stay the uh, statute of limitations to file a claim against the city. Um, and that's a 180 day period that she has. And this would stay while we go through the process of uh, uh, processing her rezoning application that we did receive uh, last Friday. Uh, so with that, I would be happy to entertain any questions and then uh, Bill can certainly speak to the uh, legalities obviously of the tolling agreement and in greater detail. Question or comment for? I do have a, a call card from one of the residents. I did talk to two of the residents that were there, and they had they obviously had some uh, questions of concern uh, about, about the time frame of uh, this agreement. I mean, what you said 180 days, but that's for for file for for a claim. What is the, what is the process at this point 
and then I'll let uh, Ms. Ms. Gibson also talk. What is the process and the time frame for this, uh, the next step? Dana, let me, yeah. I'll, I'll respond. Um, Mayor, the, the, this document, in effect, um, allows us time, meaning uh, to work with the, the, the applicant over, the, over at the DJ's CASA to see if we can find a solution under the zoning code. It avoids going to court. In this, they do agree to uh, limit their activities. Uh, were we not to do this, and were they to pursue their appeal to the Board of Adjustment, we could do nothing. They, uh, any enforcement actions are barred while they're pursuing the appeal, and I think that's why they did the appeal, is to, in effect, uh, prevent us from taking any corrective action. This allows us to sit down to see if we can find a solution. Uh, it, 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 it is technically not open-ended because it lasts until the, the uh, if we can't resolve this, then they, they will seek an appeal, and uh, uh, meaning we can't resolve the zoning, we can't solve our zoning problem, then they will seek the appeal, and uh, the appeal ends, then they, and then, they have, we go, we, then we go to court. And uh, uh, if we go to court, they would bring some actions that I'd be happy to describe for you in each session. Um, but the, the bottom of this gets, the, the timing is, is Dana and his office will work with the applicant to process an application much like any application. Dana, to, to run a, a zoning application, is that two months, three months? What do you think? We hope to have it resolved in two and a half months, two to three months, um, and we're expediting it. So we hope to see a neighborhood meeting scheduled in the coming week, and that'll be at least 15 days out from that point. And then, um, and then we'll schedule out planning and zoning commission hearing and the council hearing as well. And so what that means is during that period, you now look at paragraph two. Remember I said to you that if we didn't do this, they would just appeal to the board of adjustment and then there would be no limitations whatsoever on their operations. They've agreed to minimize, uh, to address the impact on adjacent properties. We'll continue to engage in business, business activities. Um, uh, but we'll do so in a limited manner, taking reasonable steps to minimize any perceived intrusion or interference with adjoining neighbors. I think tonight, if we have a neighbor in the, in the audience or listening on, on, on the Zoom, uh, please call, the, 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 maybe call Dana and say, these are the kinds of things we're worried about. Because frankly, he needs to know that as we work through the zoning case. And then we can go to DJ's CASA and say, you know, uh, our council agreed to the tolling agreement, agreed not to run to court and waste money on lawyers but you also agreed to be reasonable in limiting your activities. This is what we'd like you to do, and we'll, we will have that dialogue. This document allows for dialogue. It avoids racing to court. I think, I think Bill, I think it's, uh, or, and Dana, I think it's, I think it's appropriate that we hear from the, the things that are still going on there, and, in, and maybe this is something that you need, we need to move forward as a, enforcing the limitations uh, that, that, that you're talking about. So I, I would I would ask uh, Leilani if you want to go to that um, mic up there. <coughs> Mayor Gameros and board members, I really hadn't anticipated talking. I just came to listen because nobody's been letting us know what's going on. This has been going on for far, far too long. This was illegal. It was spot zoned. It's in the middle of a residential area and we have paid for that. They do not respect any of the neighbors out there. They do their music till the middle of the night. They do all kinds of things. We've had her people throw rocks at our garage. They've done all kinds of things. She let her water run for a month. We kept calling and calling. And sure, I'd like to go over there and divert that water and water my lawn, but that's not, that's not right. Her water was going under a dry stack wall that was messing up our wall completely. She doesn't pay attention to anything like that. She knew this was not a commercial property. She knew it from the beginning. We've been in several meetings with Chris Colopy. He knew it was not a commercial property and he gave her that permit anyway. Um, she's been paying residential taxes. So she knows that it's not commercial. She pays residential taxes. She's in the process of buying it from her sister 
and her sister knows it was not a commercial property. The owners before this were Kendrick Holder and Donnie DeVore. If you guys know either one of them, they would never let that be a commercial property. Spot zoned, they took it and made a business. Nobody ever informed us that we had a business going in next to us. That right there alone, you have to let the neighbors know. It's impacting all of us. At one time, she had uh, some business thing going on. She had JROTC there. They were stopping people out in the middle of Highway 60. They wouldn't even let us come in to our own property, which it's a private road. It's an easement that we all have to get in, and they were stopping people. There were hundreds of cars everywhere. And this has just gone on for way too long. She's been able to do this in a residential area and make money this entire time. She has not throttled it back or anything else. These, she had swim lessons for the kids all summer long. Talk about somebody not following COVID-19 guidelines. There is nobody monitoring this woman. Nobody knows all the people that are up there all the time. We have pictures. We have pictures when there was a City of Globe party that was planned at her location. We have City of Globe. Every City of Globe truck that you guys have was up there at that party. This has been allowed to go on for way too long. This is illegal. It was illegal from the start. It's still illegal. And now they're coming up with some bull crap about now they're going, they want to change planning and zoning and all of that. That should have been done long, long ago, but it's illegal <coughs> because you can't spot zone in the middle of a residential area. I, I don't even know why we're here. And she had the gall to say, why did you wait to bring this up? We didn't know it was our job to police our neighborhood. We thought that's what the city was for, was to protect us. But nobody has been protecting us. She's been allowed to do anything and everything that she wants to do for how long now? How long has this been going on? And we keep getting the story that, no, it's cease and desist. She can't do that anymore. It's just one thing after another. She's had plenty of time. Now she's threatening to sue. She went and got an attorney. She's threatening to sue for something that she knew was illegal from the beginning. Really? How can she sue when she knew it was illegal? I just, I really, I, I don't understand. Where, where are our rights? I've lived out there for 27 years. Me and my husband put everything into that home. And you guys are gonna say, oh, she has a beautiful home. She's made a beautiful business up there. Every home out there is absolutely gorgeous because we have taken pride. The first thing that Al Gameros knew about this whole entire incident is when I called him and said, Al, come take a ride with me. Let me show you something. Did you know about it before then, Al? I did. No, nobody knew until I came and said, how can a business go next to my residence? How can this happen? I, I really, I don't understand it. And I don't understand why we're entertaining the thought of letting her continue to do this. They did it out the back door. They did it in a sneaky manner. They knew what they were doing was not legal and they snuck it in there anyway. That's not right. Please don't let this happen. It's illegal to spot zone like that. And every, every place will tell you that's not allowed. Lonnie, thank you. And I think uh, the process, I guess what we're in, and I guess uh, Dana or Bill, you guys want to comment on that or? 
I will, Mayor, and, and I think I'll talk more at length in each session. Um, right now, if we w did not do this, there could be no restrictions whatsoever. And what I'm hearing now is that there are problems, or we can process your application. You have to demonstrate to us what you mean by reasonable restraints to, to prevent impact on the neighbors. Because if they can't demonstrate that, then we close up shop, we don't rezone, and we litigate. That will be very expensive, it will be very long, and there's no assurances you will win. Uh, if you don't win, they will operate that, that structure without any constraints. I can talk in each session about the likelihood or lot, not, the, well, not the likelihood. My recommendation is, as, as this council knows, I'm not a litigator and I think it's useless to waste lots of money on litigation. This gives us two or three months to see if we can have the dialogue that the constituent rightly says we should there should have been at the forefront. Dialogue with the neighbors. Dialogue guided by your zoning administrator because that's what they do. Dialogue between the applicant, meaning DJ's Casa, and the neighbors to see if we can find a solution that benefits all. If we can't, because at the end of the day, you council have to approve the zoning. And if we don't approve the zoning, then we rate, then we go to court and we just litigate for the next year. Um, and I don't know what the outcome will be. I'm hopeful that in two and a half months, we can try to find a solution. And in hearing the passion of the constituents, the neighbor's voice, I think we need to call, I need to call their lawyer and say, I need to know what you're doing to reasonably restrict your, your operations. Because what I heard is it's not being reasonable. Um, so that, Mayor, that's what we'll do. This has been helpful to hear the passion, to hear the concern. But as a attorney, I'm cautioning you that we we can go to court and it feels good to go to court. Lawyers love to get $100,000 in fees. I can't guarantee you win. And the outcome may not be as good as trying to find a negotiated solution. That's my objective and that's my goal. Dana, this is a question for you. As it sits currently, is it considered spot zoning? So it hasn't been rezoned, and now the request has come in, and I, I think I briefly mentioned this uh, to you in the past, that there's a section, and we're not pulling up maps right now, yeah, but there's a section of about 25 lineal feet that of uh, the Johanovich property that abuts C2 PAD zoning. And their rezoning request suggests that it's it's a continuation of that uniform zoning uh, for that property, which is the Hollis uh, Theater property there uh, to the south. So with that said, technically, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be a spot zoning or we wouldn't hang our hat on strictly that and tell you, deny it because it's spot zoning. Um, you know, there is that contiguity there. Um, so I would certainly look, you know, for other, um, look at the other aspects of the case, of the request. That's a good question to ask us when we come back with a zoning application. There can't be any spot zoning because there's been no rezoning. Um, so the spot zoning will occur if it occurs at all. We don't believe it will at the time of rezoning. I think this is this is I guess you know we we your word your voice will be heard in these whatever these proceedings are coming up in the next week or or here here shortly and and I guess the the key is that we try and impose those uh, stricter restrictions on what she's doing to try and minimize 
uh, what you're going through. So I, I you, here we're not going to be able to make any. We don't make decision tonight. All we're hearing is about the tolling, but your voice will be heard in these uh, be, be, when the the um, zoning uh, administrator will, will get these meetings together with you. Okay. And Mayor, if, I don't know if these meetings have been going on, Leilani, but uh, Paul, if you could set up something with those interested parties and Dana and maybe Bill and yourself to go over what, how this is going to work and what the process is so everybody's on the same page as to where we're at. Yep. Yes, Mayor Councilman Latham, we did also speak with another uh, neighbor uh, and explain that, and we can certainly do that, and we'll do that. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, Members Council, the, the, the timing on this, we, we got the zoning application. We had e-session two weeks ago. We got the zoning application late Friday. Um, we, we had the ability to put this on to uh, the late agenda item, and so I, I think I emailed Council Monday about 2, said we're putting it on here. I, I called Travis at... Um, uh, at, at about five o'clock, um, and uh, and and offered to to set up some meetings. He was wanting to wait until after the um, after the the public meetings, but I think we do both. And just so to 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 get all the neighbors on board, and I, and I talked to your husband. No, he. Yeah, Travis had told me that, and and Travis had said you were you guys were on vacation, so that's why they called. Oh, okay. So I, and I apologize, but the um, but I did talk to Daryl today. I know Mayor, you talked to, you were trying to get a hold of Lonnie, but the I um, Lonnie and I talked to Travis. Both Travis okay. understood the process because yeah. he's well, yeah. he knows zoning, so he knows the process. So so we we definitely uh, definitely can can pull a meeting um, early, like Friday afternoon or something like that, and um, just educational um, on on what the that that all the neighbors know what is the process going forward then they'll get there they'll be ready for the public meeting and then they can we can meet again with them as travis act asked and debrief after that um and get them ready for the uh p and z so we're we're happy to have as many meetings as we think that will benefit i think the key is that we keep them informed and let them know the process and, and <coughs> But Mr. Mayor, members, council, the. Mr. Mayor. Okay. L Lonnie, we'll, 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 let's go through the process and, and not, you know, make accusations here. Let's go through the process. And I appreciate you really coming by and, and, and at least voicing your, your feelings about what's going on. And you need to voice those in, in the in the proceedings going forward. Then, thank you. No, I'm not saying the truth. I'm not. You you tell the truth, okay? I'm I'm not. I've known you a long time, Lilani. I'm not, okay. And and Mr. Mayor, our, our um, like say we, um, this is on the agenda for uh, approval of the tolling agreement only. We have the option to go into e session prior to voting on that. Um, if you'd like, or um, we can vote on it now. Mr. Mayor, I think we should not vote on it now. I think we should talk in e-session. One option might be is for you to not author, is to authorize execution only after we have a conversation with their lawyer about the reasonable restrictions they'll put on the use. Implicit in that is that we won't sign. Then I think we do need to notify the, ins the insurance pool because we will be in court. Do we need to make a motion to go to executive session? Yeah. Well, we need to, uh, we're not. Or do the tolling thing. Well, for this one, we, we got to have a, a motion to vote to go take it to executive session. You want to make that motion? Right? Yeah, so I would make a motion Second. Uh, that we take 7A to executive session for discussion prior to making a decision. We have a motion a second to take uh, this item into executive session. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. Opposed? Any opposed, nay? Motion passed. Mm -hmm. So do we perform e-session now and e then come yeah, back e to the agenda? Here, then we'll come back. Motion. And possibly do that. 
did uh, motion to go into e session. We did. Huh? We did. Uh, we just motioned to hear this table it, move it to e session. So we still need a motion to go into.
Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. So, Mr. Mayor, the cameras are back on. Um, let me explain that, that we're tabling the tolling agreement with a stipulation um, uh, to have Bill go back and talk to the attorneys to get a harder uh, protections on, on um, activity during the zoning application process. And, um, and I, my apologies to those people watching. Uh, we forgot to turn the cameras on, but we did have a motion and a second and a vote in the affirmative. And now we'll rehear this in three weeks and the attorneys will work on that, on trying to get um, tougher sanctions for evening activities on the property while we do the rezoning. That, and hopefully I was speaking in the mic. Okay. So I, I think we're good to continue with the meeting. Excuse me. Okay, uh, we have a second call to the public. Shelley, do we have any? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. We have a comment from Tom Walsh. Okay. Um, he says, can you uh, give us some background history as to why there have been two HR-related items on tonight's council agenda? And Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, we cannot respond to the call of the public. Um, but I'd be happy to, to email Tom, Tom not tonight, but tomorrow, and I can, I can clarify that. Okay. And um, I'm sure I can help you understand. Tom's a good guy. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you, Shelby. Scheduling of meetings? Um, we do have, okay, I had a note here. Do we have an offer from CAG and Travis on this, on the, may I remind me, the study on the um, transit, and they want to they want to interview elected officials on the transit. Is, is any or all of you can participate? This, who can we just get a show of hands of who would be interested in in giving feedback to CAG about the Cobra Valley Transit at a meeting that that I, I don't know the time and place, but anybody wants to sit in and, and give feedback. What are we giving feedback oh, on? Just the transit in itself? On, they're doing a study on transit, and they want they want feedback from the council members on on um, how we what we believe in the Cobra Valley uh, Regional Trans Transit Program. I, I, okay. So okay, so Mike, we'll have you. I will too. I will as Mayor, well. Mayor, okay. I think it's important. I think uh, they all they, they got funding to do a survey, but it's important that we also give our input as our, our transit because you know it's. You know, we, we they're, they're doing, I think they're doing uh, San Carlos and Payson. So it's important that we, we uh, voice what our transit system does within our community. Okay, so we'll follow up with, um, with Travis and get a, a meeting for the three of you. Okay. And that'll be good. Okay. Future agenda items? Oh. Oh. I can't remember. Director of Contractors. <laughs> yeah. Director of Contractors. But on, on um, code and, the process, code enforcement process. I want to discuss process. the uh, code enforcement process. Code enforcement process. Okay. Is the performance evaluation a future agenda item? Mm -hmm. That's already slated, I think. Yeah. That's in place. Yes, it will be, yeah. It is. Any other topics? No other e session. Uh, I call for a motion for adjournment. Motion made. Second. Motion and second for adjournment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. Favor, nay? Motion passed. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody.